such sights to show you. Never alone. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you. <laughs> Say no to drugs. You are all my children now. Hey everyone, and welcome to the Vintage Horror Podcast, where we talk about all horror, not just the vintage kind. I'm your host, Kyle, and with me on this lovely day, I have Mark. What's going on? And Rob. Hey everybody. Today we will be talking about Valentine from 2001. Not Valentine's Day with Taylor Swift from 2014 or whatever. Ten. Ten. Wait, that's not the movie? No. That's uh, what I watched. But first, we're cracking a cold one with the boys. So what's up, boys? What's up, Rob? Yeah. Start with you first. What's going yeah. on, my man? Yeah, what's on your mind today, Rob? Let's 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 see. play therapy. Yeah, let's do a deep dive in here. Well, I've got a new roommate. I went out and got myself a bearded dragon. I named him Gojira, the, for the Japanese name, the original name of the most famous monster of them all, at least in my opinion. Bigfoot? Better watch Godzilla? That's my guy, yeah. So, uh, really excited. I always wanted a bearded dragon since I was a kid, so I'm really, really excited to finally have one. Do you have to shave it? I, I think he got lost in what you were saying there. <laughs> He's like, bearded dragon? He's like, fuck, I didn't even know if I had to. I, I, I need to Google that later. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of my friends had them growing up, and I kept saying to myself, I always wanted one, but my parents were so 110% against it, which is weird because they bought me every other animal under the sun, but that was like the one they drew the line at. Did you guys have like a farm growing up or something? Basically, I think at one point I had like 20 gerbils. I've had hamsters, anoles, snakes, rabbits. birds, rabbits. What the fuck's going on over your house? Have you never been inside house? <laughs> I only went there once, and there was like two dogs. When when Kyle used to come over when I was in high school, it would be like walking into a farm preserve. Many animals. They probably fucking stunk like manure. Many animals. Many <laughs> animals. <laughs> no comment. So, so yeah, no, it, I'm really excited. That's the most exciting thing that's happened to me this week. So, or ever, pro- possibly, possibly, this might be a benchmark in my life. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna get a plaque for it and put it on my wall. On this day, we well, got nothing on your wall, so you might want to start putting <laughs> something up there. Well, when he leaves, he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to spackle anything. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I just do the command strips, the easy removes. Yeah, it's probably even worse. For those the are ter- those are absolutely. I fucking hate those. It's, I love that because when I was in college, they were like, they will not peel paint. I, my walls looked real good after college. We had a guy that did that in uh, a bathtub. They he super glued them on the tile, and we pulled them off. All the paint came off the tile. Well, that's probably he super glued them. Well, I'm saying regardless if that was on there, the paint would have came with it, too, because it's spray paint on the tiles. Yeah. But, yeah, that's about it for me. So I kind of want to hear what's going on with the co-host with the most, Mark. Clearly, Mark, because I'm, 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 I'm the real host. I'm the host, so you're the co-host. Uh, yeah, nothing really going on. We get, Me and Kyle are heading to Atlanta tomorrow again for um, uh, the Onset Cinema for Stream 2. Another what? trip I'm not going on. Well, it was kind of like I don't know. I don't know if it was last minute. We talked about it, and then no, it wasn't last minute. Yeah, <laughs> was not was not <laughs> no. last minute. <laughs> Maybe the way I did it was last minute. But uh, la- you know, last weekend I, I went to WrestleCon in New York and got a uh, David David Arquette's autograph. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I got, got Kyle's uh, screen mask signed by one person, so he needs like everyone else now. Or is that Steve's mask? No, that's Steve's mask. <laughs> Steve has four. One six. The four is two. Is two. Dave right. Campbell and uh, D- David are cut now. Yeah, nothing really going on. I took off this week, just relaxing. It feels good to sleep till nine o'clock. Even though there's nine text messages waking me up every morning from Johnny, Mike, and all these different group chats. Not me. Kyle doesn't answer anyone ever. <laughs> Have them on mute. I don't get them. <laughs> True story. Other than that, yeah, that's about it. What's going on with you, Kyle? Uh, nothing. Well, did we record before or after HorrorCon? Before, right? It was the day before? 
because then you stay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, we went to Harakon too. That was cool. Uh, I told, that was like two weeks ago. That's why I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, we met Felissa Rose. She was cool as fuck. She was like really weird. I think she was horny, but. She liked me, I think. Yeah. Uh, she She's probably up there now in the top, like, nicest people we've met. Yeah, there's a lot of them, honestly. There's more nice people than, like... Shitty people. Yeah. For sure. But, I mean, nobody, when we went to go walk away, was like, hold on, wait. And we're like, what? And they're like, give me a hug. <laughs> I, I usually have to ask for the hugs. Yeah. Um. So, she was cool. And... Who else? To be, oh, Mark Patton. Mark, Mark Patton. Yeah, Mark Patton. Who has the worst 8x10s or 8x16s. So, I looked... Those are 8x10s, but they're on a bigger piece of paper, and you have to cut them down, which is annoying. Yeah. Well, I have mine from Texas Frightmare from 2015 that looks like it got cut with a chainsaw because I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah, and he said he, his documentary, The Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street or something. What the fuck yeah. is it called? He's, um, it's like a documentary, I guess, about – I don't know if it's about part two or his – I don't know. I think it's just – I don't know if it's just solely about part two or – but either way, that's going to be coming out, and it, they're going to be touring with it, and they're going to go to New York at some point, he said, Rob. So if you want, me and Mark are definitely going to go to that. We just don't know where, who's doing it, when, or anything. So. Yeah, he said he thinks you, July. You know as much information as we do. Yeah, but this is a good start. <laughs> but I'm saying. <laughs> don't know how much it costs. Normal, normally, you guys are well in the planning process before I find out. But the thing is, he doesn't even know, because we asked Mark Patton. He's like, oh, he said he's like not allowed to talk about it much. Yeah, he said he can't. Really talk about it until it comes out on the the online or the DVD. Yeah, and he said like you can follow me and I'll release the dates as they come out. Oh, okay. But they'll have like a showing in, in New York City. He said so. And we'll, Nightmare on Elm Street Two is good. Fuck you. Yeah, don't want to spoil that because I'm sure we'll do that at some point. But I love Nightmare on Elm Street Two. Maybe we can all go and then uh, do a review of it. Who knows? Or me and Mark can go and you'll just say you'll go to the last <laughs> minute and then you won't answer us. <laughs> yeah, but I'm buying tickets tomorrow. <laughs> They're not out yet. We don't even know when, where New York it is. Yeah. I'll be there. Um, but so we did that. Um, and then this last week I was on call for work, so I didn't do very much. I've been cracking out on Final Fantasy VII. Um, I probably put close to 30, 35 hours into it. I wouldn't say maybe even more now. So I've been doing that. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like Mark said, we're going to Atlanta tomorrow. We'll probably hang out outside of a hotel on Friday to meet a bunch of UFC fighters because that's what we do whenever they're in New York. And um, It's always a fun time. Yep. I just it's really not. <laughs> hope we can see some people that we want to meet. Um, we're going to be doing the Onset Cinema for Scream 2. And then, but that morning morning right we're doing oh yeah totally forgot about that we're going to the uh place where they filmed uh jason lives. jason lives part six jason lives and we're gonna try to look at that stuff hopefully they don't kick us out and they say yeah okay it's cool you can come in and that's pretty much it so our podcast doesn't have any new actual written reviews but we have uh somebody two pe- more people so james and Johnny, who both re- actually wrote reviews, gave us five stars. And two people didn't write reviews, but they gave us five stars. I don't know who they are. So now we have a full five out of five stars on I- iTunes. So that's, that's cool great. as fuck. That's We're moving awesome. up in the world. It's a start. I um, appreciate it if more people gave us reviews, but that's about it. Um, again, rate us, review us. We will read your stuff out loud. And if you make it funny, that'll be even better. But try not to use foul language because I heard that iTunes will not post it if there's foul language. Which could be the reason we have two more five stars, but that we can't see. Um, I guess that's it. I don't know. Anything on your minds? There was a bit of news that came out this week. I believe it was this past week. A little convergence between my nerdy Star Wars universe and the horror world. Uh, Mark Hamill was announced as the voice of Chucky. Yeah. In the new Child's Play uh, at WonderCon. So I wanted to gather your thoughts. Obviously, Mark Hamill has quite a background to him. And, and animated works is most memorably known for his performance as the Joker in Batman, the animated series, where he was masterful in that performance. So I would like to hear your take, Kyle and Mark, on an icon, at least in my world, an icon like Mark Hamill taking on an iconic character like Chucky. I'm pumped. He, he's fantastic as the Joker, and I know he can do, like, good voices, but we'll have to see 
because I don't. I wonder if there's going to be like the "Hi, I'm Chucky" kind of voice, and then like the "You fucking bitch" kind of voice, and if he's doing them both, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure two different people did them last time. So I wonder if it's going to be like the same kind of shit. Um, I don't know. He's good at voice acting. He does great. So, oh yeah, he's a master. Yeah. So I'm hoping you know. Well, yeah, he had to be because uh, nobody wanted to use his ass for a long time because he was Luke Skywalker and it kind of fucked up his career. So. Wait, wait, wait. Mark Hamill's not his alias? Because <laughs> no, I thought it was Luke Skywalker playing yeah, Mark yeah, Hamill. Yeah, exactly. He That kind of fucked shit up for him, so he had to do something else. But, yeah, I'm kind of excited to see where that goes. I don't know if Mark has input on that or not. I don't know. I, I can't see Chucky not being Brad Dorf. Yeah. And this is Mark Hamill you speak of. I only know him from The Flash. Don't really know him for anything else. The fuck does he do? He's in The Flash? He was on a couple episodes, I think, as Trickster. He did yeah. a pretty good job as, as yeah. that. So. Oh, yeah. He also played Cockknocker in James What the Bob, fuck? In James <laughs> on Bob Shake's Pack. I don't remember that. <laughs> He's like, but then again, I only knew him from The Flash, though. So. Did you seen James on Bob Shake's Pack? Yeah, but I didn't know him back then because I only know him from The Flash in, like, 2014. But do you know the part where they're, like, on the set after they beat up? Jason Biggs and fucking oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah and then yeah, yeah. they take their costumes around the set and then yeah. like cock knocker comes out that's Mark Hamill I did I did not know that yeah man I wonder if he's gonna be in the remake of it remake of what they're doing redoing like Jane Saw Bob or making like I a think new they're one. making a sequel because oh, I know they have to. like a lot of the old cast yeah they're trying to make a sequel yeah I'm really excited it's Mark Hamill it's crazy as hardcore of a Star Wars fan as I am. These days, I seem to get far more excited when I hear something of him, like him doing something in the animated world, just because I know it's going to be quality. At, well, so. after what they did to him in fucking the Last Jedi, I understand that. Well, you know, what did they do to him? Sp- you know what? Fuck it. We're not even spoiler alerting this. He fucking died. My guy died. They fucking killed well, him. Well, wasn't he dead the whole time? He was just a ghost. He I died for us. I fucking. I saw a YouTube it. video. They said he was dead. I hate. And it. he was a ghost. You're so dumb. I saw the video. It's real. If it's on the internet, it's real. So dumb. Uh, also, Pet Se- Cemetery came out last weekend. It's getting a lot of good reviews. Yes. Still haven't seen it yet, but... Yeah, I haven't seen it either. You haven't seen it, correct? Yeah, and I feel like I'm one of those people that sometimes goes into a film that tends to get major critical reviews, and I don't see what they see. And then vice versa, I go into films where critics... You don't see color. ...are, are, are, <laughs> are, are just crapping on it. But I like the film. I know you that occurs with you sometimes. Well, I mean, I think that's with a lot of movies. Honestly, a lot of people when crit- what whatever critics say, or they're usually wrong. But this one, a lot of the pages I follow and stuff on Instagram say that it's actually pretty good. I even read someone say that it's almost like not a replacement for the original, but they can coexist and it, they're just as good as each other. And that, like, it, yeah, and that. It's not like, hey, I should need to throw out the original and just like this one. I, I don't know how. That's how I feel about um, Evil Dead when they do the remake. I love that movie, the remake. Yeah. And I know a lot of people weren't down with it, but I think they bo- those both can coexist too. Yeah. Yeah, I saw an interesting, I'm always seeing memes one way or another. There was an interesting meme about an article that was posted that the, they, I don't know how true it is, but one of the reasons they switched in a major plot point, they switched the character uh, fatalities. Uh, Ellie and I can't remember the kid's name. Gage. Off. Gage. Gage. Yeah. That they didn't want to traumatize the young actor playing Gage. Oh my fucking! God. And so it was an image of like that article, and then it was like, uh, oh, what's, oh my god, from Georgie, from it, and uh, it just says, it, it, and it really had like the, the actor and the kid said, "Hold my arm," and I was cracking. <laughs> hold my beard. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. cracking up, and I was like, "Come on, guys!" Hey, listen, I'm not. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm not going to judge it. But if, yeah. if the if it works, it works. I just don't. I'm uncomfortable with major plot point shifts like that. Well, but, they have, they have to do something that's different. I understand that. Yeah, but. I heard it's really good though. So. Yeah, no, I know. I before it even came out, I. I was re- read online uh, some reviews and people said it was surprisingly better than they thought it would be. The kid who played Gage in the original one was that Anjay Harkon. Yeah, Miko or Miko. I Her- don't fuck his, he I still don't got know. that mean look on his face. No. He was also he, a new nightmare. He looked yeah. He looks exactly the same, just older. It's you just, know who looks exactly <laughs> the same too? The the fucking kid that is in Adam's family that plays Pugs. 
Pugsley. Yeah, Pugsy. Pugsley. He, he, he just looks older now. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, that's like Macaulay Culkin. Looks just yeah. like an old, like a mummified <laughs> child. Well, Macaulay Culkin's doing good though now. I think. Yeah. Oh, and that reminded me. This whole like movie talk, cracking co- a cold one open. I fucking tried to get Endgame tickets and uh, was not able to get them, and that's very frustrating because I waited in line in the virtual queue for a long time. <laughs> And I have a question. Yeah. Why don't you just get him at Hell Escape? I should have. I should have just did it. With, when Shout out, Johnny. I, I didn't think about it, honestly, because I was like, Brick is so much closer. Like, why even go to Howl? Because it's a three hour fucking movie, and I didn't want to make Sam have to, like, uh, drive home later than she had to for work the next day. So go see the movie at, like, six o'clock. When? <laughs> On the Thursday, but now you That's what to, I was going to do. I was now trying you have to, wait to get early. Monday now, anyway, so yeah. you better yeah. stay off the internet. Rob, don't say, say anything. <laughs> I, I, Rob, yeah. don't even breathe. I managed to snag my ticket for Saturday. Yeah. My coworker said that he waited on, online for six hours trying to get a ticket, and he only got one, so he's going by himself for like six o'clock. Yeah, so I, was, I don't think there's a problem with people going to movies by themselves. He ain't talking anyway. What, what was that figure you gave me earlier about the comparison of ticket sales oh, to so, Infinity War? Yeah, so compared to Infinity War, apparently Endgame so far has outsold, or at least in pre-orders, five to one. Five to fucking one. That's insane. Uh, and okay, like when they have weekend, uh, like records and stuff like that. Nowadays, they kind of fuck it up. Like it, it shouldn't be compared to old movies because old movies never premiered on Thursdays. That was something special they used to do at like midnight on Thursday. Like you could go see it, you know. And then it started slowly and slowly, like getting closer to six o'clock. Yeah, and not only that, there were. So, so there's a whole extra day for them to break records now. But back in the day, like, I remember when Star Wars was coming out, uh, episode three, it came out at midnight. Yeah. And there was one theater dedicated to it. Mm-hmm. When we went to Infinity War, they had six, no, five almost different rooms in the theater dedicated to Infinity War on opening night just to accommodate overlap times. And, like, that kind of availability wasn't there. In those times, right. so not only have you bumped back more hours into a day, now that now they're filling multiple theaters, multiple viewing rooms at once to overlap time. That's how you get like a seven, seven thirty, eight, eight thirty. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, Endgame was even more than that. It was like six, six fifteen, six thirty, six forty five, seven. I think, at least in Brick, almost every theater is probably going to be Endgame by the end of the night, which yeah. is fucking crazy. Yeah, I think that's how has it by me is. I think they only have 12, and there's 12 different showings that, like, overlap. That's fucking crazy. And honestly, movie theaters as a whole, uh, in the early 2000s, were on a severe decline uh, for ticket sales and yeah. attendance. So the su- I think the superhero genre and what Marvel has done for the, the movie theater business has really kept them alive and kept them surging. Because there was a time where we, remember we would talk about when we were teenagers, like... Our movie theater is going to become a thing of the past. Like I still think they're going to, you know, and so, but so then you have to ask, how long can they ride the wave? It. The thing is, this only happens every once in a while. These like big releases like this, right? And it's a shame it never happens in really in the horror universe. Last time I can remember something that happened in the horror universe was it. Yeah, people but people get really excited part about two's that. Coming out soon, so yeah, we should see a trailer for that soon. I thought they said it just got or. It, didn't they release it somewhere? I don't know. I know they were at like Cinecon or whatever it was called, and they had like a lot of the cast together. I think they and showed... when they do that, like usually the next day the trailer comes out, but I don't think it's been out yet. I think they showed the people at the convention. They showed them some uh, like Clip? footage oh. from the film, some like, like just some interaction clips. But from what I've said, initial responses of those clips are saying the actors look very good in their roles, very natural. So I'm excited. But that's kind of where I'm at. This is an awesome segment here. Cracking open a cold one today. Covered yeah. a lot. I think if I had the choice whether to go to a theater or sit at home and watch something, the day it came out, like say they released it in theaters and you could rent it at home, I'd rather rent it at home. For I, sure. I hate when people are on their phone and talk. So, Dude, when I saw Us, I wanted to I wanted to just get up and like some guy was on his phone and he wasn't even like directly in front of me. He was like way down like an aisle, but I just happened to see it, and like I wanted to just go over and like pick up his phone, and like smash it. It looked like he was on a GPS. I'm like what? <laughs> like what the fuck? Are you tracking your package or something? Maybe like, he was what? on uh, Uber Eats and he was waiting for his food to get delivered. Maybe. I don't know. It was so fucking frustrating. But yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think movie theaters are gonna stay around forever, and that's why I think when something like this big happens, they put it in every fucking theater because they're like, we need to get this money while we can. Got to cash out. Yeah. Yep. 
And your thoughts, concerns, shit your pants. <laughs> That's on its way. <laughs> no, we're ready to move on. All right, well then let's move on. <clears throat> let's move on to the main event. Valentine from 2001. Came out February 2nd, 2001. Yeah, I wouldn't know. And also, I think this movie had um, a Super Bowl TV ad, too. Did it? And and it was only a $10 million budget, which was crazy. But that wouldn't surprise me because of how many big actors and stuff are in it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't want to say big actors, but... The, At the time. Yeah. Um, it was rated R. The runtime is an hour and 36 minutes. On IMDb, they only gave it a 4.8 out of 10. Yeah, the, the Rotten Tomatoes, I think, has a 9%. Metacritic or whatever the fuck mm-hmm. it is, it was like eighteen or something like that. Eighteen like, out of a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I, I a lot of people don't like this. C- c- critics don't either. But I think it's as you watch the movie, it is like a movie of its time. Oh yeah, yeah. Because it's the scream. I know we did last summer, Urban Legend era. I, this guy directed Urban Legend, so yeah. It had an estimated budget of ten million dollars, and it grossed in the U.S. Twenty point three million, which isn't bad, honestly, for a horror movie, especially like a slasher in two thousand one. Yeah, but I, now I was going to talk about how much I like or dislike it, but we'll save that. <laughs> I'll say that's usually at the end, Kyle. Yeah, do you want to skip the whole thing and just do that? Yeah, if you want, fuck it. You ready? Everybody got the ratings? Oh no, okay. Um, we can go over some people who mm-hmm. are in this movie. So I know the guy uh, that directed Jamie Blanks. Um, he did Urban Legend a couple years prior. He also, when they gave him this, the this they gave him the pitch him the idea for this movie. He thought it was the My Bloody Valentine remake, and he said he didn't want to be part of it. Because <laughs> yeah, Valentine. Yeah, yeah, so he thought it was that, and so he's like, "No, nah, I'm good." Um, but then he came back. They came back to him. He also tried to. Um, he he was in the running to direct Scream, and I know he did last summer, but obviously he lost them out. He lost to. Which urban legend did he direct? So I think believe he did the original one from two, okay. 1998. All right, so I think it's from 1998, right? I don't know, because I know the one girl also was in um, Final Cut. Yeah, that's yeah. the second one, and that came out before this. So yes. All right, so uh, the cast we have Denise Richards, which I mean everyone knows the model and movie she was in Wild Things. That's all you need to see ever in your life. Because she's out there fucking kissing girls, turning me on. Nev Campbell, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know if you knew that. I don't. It's a good movie. You know what the listeners can really hear? You nod your head. That's that's always good. Are you talking about me or Rob? Him, oh. mother suckers. You mother suckers. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of what you just said. That's why. I was just. I, what I mother was... suckers? Oh, <laughs> the, why? Okay. Whatever. I was having whatever. flashbacks. So. Um. She was also in The World Is Not Enough. That's like, like her biggest movie, I think. Yeah. As her, her name in that movie was Christmas. I don't... I've never seen that movie. I've only played the game for N64. I'm pretty sure her name was Christmas Jones. That was the one after uh, GoldenEye, right? Two after GoldenEye. Really? Did they make a game for the one after that then? I yeah, thought the only tomorrow, game was... Tomorrow Never Dies. They made a game for that? PlayStation 1, yep. Uh, we also have David... Can you guys help me with his last name? Is it Borianz? Borianz? That was good. I think you're pretty good. You mean Angel? Yes. Angel. How do you pronounce it? Borianz? Borianz? Anyway. Let me see the name. (laughs) The name, anybody? Well, it's all the way over here. Let's see. Let's look at it. I would say Borianz. He played Angel in Buffy and his own show, Angel. He is like one of the. He might be like the head star of Bones, right? He is like yep. the star of Bones. Yep. And he was also in The Crow, the one with fucking Ed Furlong. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know either until I saw it and I said, wow. I'd never seen that movie either with Ed Furlong. I either. was shocked to see him in this film. As soon as I saw him, I was like, is that my guy, Angel? Dude, right? I And that's one of those things, even when he's on Bones, I can't see him as anything other than Angel. Well, you also, think, yeah. um, what's his name? Luke Wilson was in the running to play this part. I can see him. And then the it. Stu- actually, no, I can't. The studio they wanted um, uh, Jared Leto to do it, to do that part. That would honestly be good too. Also, yeah. I forgot with like Denise Richard when the dude wrote the script, he wanted um, 
uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt to play that part. Hewitt. Hewitt. <laughs> Jennifer Love Hewitt. Hewitt. I love Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, so I wish one, she would do conventions. Yeah, they had her written in as the for that. I fucking hate you, Rob. <laughs> um, Marley <laughs> Shelton. She was from Never Been Kissed, Bubble Boy, Scream 4. C. And uh, Planet Terror. I love her, by the way. I don't know if you know that, but especially in Scream 4, she got those fucking crazy eyes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that girl from the Who's Crazy. Like she got those kind of eyes. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Is that I, weird? Yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, Jessica Capshaw, who was in Grey's Anatomy. I don't think she was in anything else that was really that big. I don't even think she's there. A... Were, there are two actresses in this from Grey's Anatomy. Yes. But what's funny about that, what? well, we'll get to the next one. Okay. Uh, Jessica Caulfield. Feel? Feel? I don't know how to pronounce any of these fucking last names, apparently. She was in Legally Blonde 1 and 2. White Chicks, Urban Legends, Final Cut, and fucking Road Trip. Dude, That when I saw her, as soon as she, like I saw her, I said, this is definitely, the, like, I know her from somewhere. And, like, four um, seconds later, I, like. I, I, I thought about this. What? I'm sorry to cut you off. That Got girl's it. also in the Sandlot. What girl? Mar- Marley Shelton, whatever her name is. Oh, yeah, she's fucking. Um, I, th- I just thought, I'm like, yeah. wait, you didn't say that? Isn't no. she in the Sandlot? Yeah, yeah, I totally forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. She's the fucking, uh, she's Wendy. She's some... with, yeah, the fucking lifeguard. Yeah, Peppercorn, Wendy Peppercorn. Yeah, fucking piece of shit. Show some goddamn respect. <laughs> Dude, I love it. <laughs> um, but that girl who was in Road Trip, she played the fucking wrong Tiffany. I don't know if you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that part? yeah. Have you seen? I can't remember. I haven't w- seen it in a while. When time. fucking the girl, like, goes to the college to, like, be like, hey, your boyfriend cheated on me. Which one is? What's her oh. name again? Which one? Uh, she's the one who plays Lily, I believe. Oh, I thought it was the one for Dorothy. I was like, no, no, the one who plays Lily. She, um, <laughs> dude, I Road Trip's one of my favorite movies. I love Tom Green. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a good movie. I haven't seen it in a very but, long time. Uh, yeah, I love the part where the like the girl <laughs> plays Beth goes and fucking is like, yeah, like your boyfriend cheated on you with me, and then like it's the wrong Tiffany. It's oh, like, yeah, it's a yeah, random yeah, school. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like. Because he, like, like, he said Austin, he's like, he said Austin, Massachusetts, Massachusetts she's or like, Boston, yeah, she, Texas. She's like, did you? You mean Boston? He's like, yeah, that's what I said. So then she goes to Boston, Massachusetts, <laughs> and tells some random girl, "Your boyfriend cheated on me." So the girl fucking smashes the guy's car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I or so I, I love that fucking part. I can't like the whole time. Every time I saw her, I, it was just in my head, and I couldn't yeah. get it out. That also, I'm oh, sorry, go Rob. No, it's, this era of films produced some pretty. De- pretty interesting horror films but also some really fun comedies like along, yeah. along with Road Trip I'm reminded of Euro Trip well and like, that was supposed to be like that's like Euro Trip is like the American Werewolf in Paris of American Werewolf in London if you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah I got you I got you I got like, you it was supposed to be like same thing how Van Wilder has like all those fucking sequels that, like, Van Wilder's good but I'm saying they have all the sequels which aren't as good kind of thing I've only seen The Rise of Taj you also had Kung Pao who Oh, you're saying like that's just another just that era like comedy, yeah. like those kind of these kind of films just would not they're built of that time. Yeah, they're not going to show up again. No. They are these horror films and those type of comedies. They are unique to when we were teenagers. We were coming up through middle school and high school, yes. and that definitely factors. Definitely has a nostalgia factor. In, Unless Tom in Green there. decides to make more comedies, which I would totally love. Uh, Catherine Heigl. Who was in Knocked Up? She's in Grey's Anatomy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what's funny is about that. How I said is the other girl that's in Grey's Anatomy. Uh huh. They don't share one minute of screen time in that show. Really? And they don't even share screen time in this either. Yeah. Are they big, like parts in both? The, I think Catherine show? He- he- Heigl was been on, was on for six seasons, and then she this girl came on in the fifth season. The other one I can't I don't remember which one it was off the top of my head. That was on Grey's Anatomy. She was uh, that was Jessica Capshaw. Who plays... Yeah, yeah, Dorothy. Yes. Who's also... Tara Reid had that role originally, too. For the role of Dorothy. Wow, really? Yeah, then they got rid of her. I kind of wish that... That wouldn't make sense, though. What do you mean it wouldn't make sense? Because she's supposed to be the fat one. Well, I'm saying that girl doesn't look fat. It would make... She's got a fat face. I'm sorry to everyone fucking (laughs) out there who's mad that I'm fat shaming, but she's got a fat face. She looks good. She's all right. But yeah, so yeah, they don't share any screen time in Grey's Anatomy. And I think the other girl was on Grey's Anatomy for like seven years afterwards. I've never seen a single episode of it. Yeah, I don't like shows like that. 
Uh, Catherine Heigl's also in Bride of Chucky, just to link that to like a horror movie, another yeah. horror movie. And then... I'll give you a little story about Catherine Heigl real quick. How she fucked up in Hollywood disowned her why did they do that what happened with that i don't remember she did something did that happen really i don't know anything about that that's why she did something and like all of hollywood was like yeah like fuck her don't cast her in anything yeah no but for this movie uh she only filmed her scenes in like i think three days Uh uh-huh and so she only read her script and then after she like saw the movie she's like yeah i fucking hate this movie and i wish i never did it why i don't know she's not into it (laughs) she looked like she i don't want to keep talking about women's weight on here but she looks like she's like a little bit thicker than she was or is now in like other shit. And she looked good though. Yeah, she looked good. She yeah. looked better. I think she looked better back then, honestly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, she, she reminds me of like Char- Charlie Theron. Really? They kind of look the same to me. I don't know. I always get those two uh, mixed up. Not really. Not really. Well, not to me. I don't know. Then again, I, I know how to look at people, recognize them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, out of words. Uh, and I don't know how to pronounce this other girl's name. It's, I think it's Heidi or Heidi Burris. She played Yuna from Final Fantasy X. It's Heidi. Well, okay, I'll see you fucking pronouncing names over there. I can't read. You ain't got anything written down. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I have a, I have a scribble in my notes. I watched a movie. Um, I don't know. It, oh, and then... No, I guess that's it for like the big actors. Well, the detective, but I will not give it... I will not try to pronounce his name. Yeah, I oh, have it down here, Let too. Let me try. Let me give it's it a like shot. It's like Fulvio uh, Cursera... Cersei Cesare Cesare Yeah Fulvio Cesare Sounds Greek I know who he is But I don't Pronounce his name He's from Resident Evil Afterlife Can we just call him Horny guy He was horny He's from Resident Evil Afterlife Right Maybe What the fuck Why would you What the fuck (laughs) Bring him up for then Is he He's in That's fucking Veronica Mars' dad Veronica Mars Is it In the TV show Veronica Mars With Kristen Kristen Bell Pretty sure that's his, her dad in the movie, the TV show. I have no idea what you're talking about. You never seen Veronica Mars? It was on WB also. No. Okay, they're bringing it back this year. Never heard of her. Well, I'm gonna watch it this year. It's a good movie. <laughs> good show. <laughs> they made a movie and Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. Oh. Never heard of it. Anyway, so uh, Valentine starts out with shots of like a boy. Who well, I guess his name is Jeremy. Is asking girls to a dance, like or to dance well, they're at, at the a dance. dance. So they're not... He's asking them to dance, and then it would cut between like him asking a girl to dance and then rejecting him, and then shots of like the yearbook with writing in it, like "I love you," "I hate you," and stuff like that. Uh, and then finally, he like asks a girl, like "Hey, will you dance with me?" And they dance, and then it shows them kissing underneath. Well, the... like, Bleachers or something. When he's asking them and they're like giving their, she's the one girl's like, I'd rather boil a lie <laughs> yeah. than dance with you. Yeah. Which one was that supposed to be? Was that supposed to be that Paige? Was, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So they're all like pretty much not nice to him. And he looks like nerdy as fuck. Yeah, he's got buck teeth. So then finally he asks like this chubby girl, like, hey, do you want to dance? And she says like, yeah. And then they're like kissing. But then some bullies like come up on top of the bleachers and be like, oh, is this pervert bothering you? And she's like, yeah, he was attacking me. So they like pour, <laughs> yeah. So they pour fucking um, punch like fruit all punch on him, like yeah. Carrie, and then like beat his ass. That reminds me of Carrie. I'm assuming that's what that throwback. They is strip there. him yeah. naked, to, like down, well, down to his underwear, and they drag him out into the dance floor yeah. and just start stomping on him. Everybody's yeah. laughing too. They, they beat his ass like they, they like he owes him child support. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, it cuts to. 13 years later. Yeah, Shelly, who, like, was she, I guess she was one of the girls. Yeah, she was one of the girls. And she's on a date with this guy named Jason, and Jason's a fucking douche. (laughs) And he refers to himself in the third person. Oh, my God. And then. At first, I thought he was talking about somebody else. I thought they were having (laughs) conversations about somebody else. He's like, Jason, this. And then she's like, Jason likes this, Jason, this, Jason, that. Fuck Jason. And then she's like, "Uh, yeah, Jason has. Some but it's so fake and obvious looking. Like it wasn't there just a second ago when he was talking, and then right when she said it was there. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to hold the spinach in his mouth with the fucking his tongue. So I the, I gotta applaud him though, but his because his pickup line was like, "If Jason knows that women seek out the strongest in the species to reproduce, and a warrior for a woman like you is looking for a guy like Jason," and I'm like, "What?" The? And then she <laughs> and then she tells him, "I'm like, yo, this guy's what is happening?" Yeah, she's like, "Oh, I gotta go," and he's like, "What?" And she's like, "Yeah, I got finals." But then 
so before she leaves, he tries to like, he's like, oh, can Jason get a kiss or something like that? And she's like, mm, no. Also, she so. she paid for the meal too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yo. When they get the check. <laughs> Muy expensivo. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he says when they get the check. Dude, this guy's such a cornball, but I like his style, so you know, oh I, respect, God, I respect I it. I fucking hate but this I guy. Like, I don't I like, want to pay for girls ever either. I like as soon as she leaves, he like turns around and sees another girl. He's like, Jason likes. Yeah. And just like walks towards her. This whole movie is so misogynistic, but it's it, so funny at the same time. It was time. just the time. Yeah, it, was, yeah it's, it's, it is like. It's a sign of the times. And they also like, <laughs> but through that, they empower the women. You know, like she, Shelly's successful or kind of. So oh, she's no, yeah, money, yeah. So yeah. she's like, oh, fuck this guy. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pay whatever. Yeah. Um, then Shelly goes to, I guess this is a morgue or something like that school. Well, she's in medical school. Yeah. Yeah. And so she's about to perform an autopsy on a dead body and she hears a noise. So, of course, like anything fucking before like 2005, for some <laughs> reason, people go to investigate. What was that? Noise? Yeah. Oh, what was that? I want to earn my Scooby snack. So she goes to investigate, and she runs into like some guy in the locker room, I guess, who's also a medical student. Yeah, but I, I don't even know that guy's name. I don't know either. So I don't even know if his character had a name. Generic male character one. Yeah. yeah, but dude, when he popped out, it scared me. I jumped. Preface: You've never seen this before, right? Right. Okay, so Rob's yeah. never seen it either. It it, it got me too because yeah. I, I don't know what it is about this movie. Like, one of the things that it has going for it is the sound. That's what it was. It's very good at setting up a very eerie tone, and that scene, it got me. He got yeah, me. Yeah, because I rewound it for a second to, like... Uh, to re-scare yourself? To do... So let me I, see what get me again. I, well, I think there's, like... Uh, put, put a little more shit Because I was hands. writing as that was happening, and then, it, like, I looked up, and I was watching, and then mm-hmm. it, that's when I, like, jumped. But then I rewound it, and when I was writing some more... I wasn't even watching, and that sound made me jump again. So I think that's what it was. What's wrong with you? No, this, this movie has postpartum depression. <laughs> this movie does have a really good sound design. You get PTSD from the movie, but yeah. anyway. So when this dude like runs into her, he's like, "Good luck tomorrow, or whatever." About her final. Yes. There's a Valentine's Day card on the fucking the wall next to him. How did how did they he not see any of them see that before he left? He's, well, it's her locker, so you would think that she would notice that kind of shit. No, but I'm saying it's on the locker, and it's his head level. So but why would he care? But it's I'm not saying his he locker. would see it. But I'm saying like it's not his to, locker. Oh, I didn't see it here. Okay. But that's I'm saying if it's her locker, then how yeah, the I fuck guess. didn't she notice? I don't even remember what it said in it. To be honest, um, I just remember the last line said, "My love for you grows as you bleed from your neck." Sounds about right. That is right. I wrote it down. But what, okay, so then anyway, so after that, she's like, I don't know if she throws it away, takes it with her. She goes back to her, her uh, body, Chad. That's a, the body's name. She calls it Chad. She's like, all right, yes. back to Chad. Yeah. And she gets the scalpel and is ready to cut the tummy. The, the tummy. The and navel it, area. And then you see it, like, breathe. And she's like, what? And then, like. She goes, oh, shit. And she, yeah, she shits her pants, basically. Like. Yeah, she definitely <laughs> has shit in her pants. And then she, like, runs away from it. And then, like, the runs it near the closet and it's like it has a window in it and then you see the dead body of chad yeah the corpse chad i don't know if she corpse. opens the door and i don't remember it now. falls open okay it falls open yeah and the chad falls out onto the floor and the she, chad yeah <laughs> and she looks back and disappearing act the fucking guy's gone off completely the naked yeah off the gurney we're assuming he's this naked. guy's a ninja it's we, gotta be okay first of all how dare we assume this killer's gender we don't know it's a guy Second of all, it's true. This is 2001, so yeah, I guess you know. Let's still assume then. We're 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 I, in a time machine. I just yes. don't know why the killer would hide. Like, what if she walked back in the room and she's like, "Well, going in," <laughs> yeah. stabbed him, or, like, or just turns the lights off and leaves, like locks the door. <laughs> like she got that scalpel real close there before he decided to give a little breathy breath. But, Not only uh, that, dude. When I before the body like was in the closet, I had a feel like when it started breathing, I had a feeling it was going to be the person. Just get, some of yeah. this shit was very predictable, and I'm and in my head I'm thinking like, how the fuck did he get rid of a body that quick and it's nowhere to be seen? <laughs> like, how the fuck did that happen? But I thought it was gonna be like something where I first walked in and I was like, okay, that was a one two switch. But how how did this guy get naked, hide his clothes, get under there, perfectly lay everything on top of himself like that? That's and a good not, question too. And not move. I was thinking at the very least, what was gonna happen is she was about to cut and like his arm was gonna fly up with a knife and stab her, and I was gonna be like, oh shit. But then, like, as soon as they did the whole disappearing act thing, I was like, okay, I see how it is. We got it. 
Even their stomachs were similar. It's a like leprechaun. Like in color. Yeah, I w- yeah, I noticed that too. That like, the person was very spray, pale. What you like spray I, paint? Yeah. I appreciate this gender neutral killers uh, initiative and tact here. Well, we're back in 2001 with the movie, so it's definitely a guy. Uh, <laughs> but I wish she went to go like cut the belly and the person farted. <laughs> like, that, that, that would be better, but... <laughs> I don't know if it was going for that. No, if they weren't. A little squeaker out there. Um, so then she's like looking around, kind of like, where the fuck did this person go? Because the body's not underneath the sheets anymore. And she gets grabbed from behind by, uh, well, you don't see by who. And then uh, she like stabs. Presumably the, a naked guy. Yeah, she stabs no. the person with a scalpel and runs. The person in the mask follows. It's like um, almost like a uh, cherub. Is yeah, that what it's, it's called? Cherub. Keep it. can, yeah. Yeah. How did he get dressed so fast without making Again, a sound? Yeah, I don't know how. So he did you, that. what I'm thinking, actually, so when he was underneath and only his stomach was showing, he just had his, he pulled up his shirt. shirt. But, that's, you, but I, that's what I thought too, and I rewounded, I rewound it back, and I yeah. looked at it, and it's literally form fitting on him. Like there's no clothes on. That guy is butt naked. Yeah, people didn't wear skinny jeans back then, Mark. <laughs> so Rob's the one who wants to know, not me. It was still hot topic, baggy with the chains. Um. So. Uh, she runs. She, yeah, she goes into a, a room with a bunch of body bags. Is that like a that's refrigerator? A yeah, it's like the morgue. Yeah, but is it refrigerated? That's what I. Yeah, because it seemed cold. But it's a, the place where they have the bodies in the body bags, and they're like bleeding them dry. I guess. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which I don't know if that's not how that works. I think. I don't know. I've never done that before. So, so he opens the f- first couple bags. The killer opens up the first couple bags, and there's just dead bodies. So then he just starts stabbing through them because <laughs> there's so many bags. He said, "Yeah, I can't be sitting here unzipping <laughs> all of them." And then he finally gets the last bag and. Instead of just stabbing it, he unzips it, and Shelly's there, and he, like, uh, slits her throat, and she dies pretty fast. Never seen someone die that fast from a throat slit. Like, literally cut, and she's like, ah, and that's it. Pretty cool, though, when the blood and starts the, draining out the bag, though. Yes. And then the killer s- starts to bleed from the nose. Yes, the killer starts to bleed from the nose. Kind of like... Jeremy, when he was a little boy, well, you at the skipped dance. over in the beginning, yes, yes, which I skipped over because I oh, totally forgot my that God. that was a plot point. I didn't even notice that. You're you're lying, so I don't <laughs> even know why I'm paying attention to you right now. <laughs> um, it cuts to Paige and Kate who are walking and talking about how they want to go to speed dating, turbo dating. Yeah, yeah. Well, the science is turbo dating. They didn't get the, they weren't allowed to use speed dating. Is that trademarked? <laughs> I don't know. I just made that yeah. up. But the science said turbo dating. Yeah. So they're speed dating and it's not going well for this, Kate. This scene fucking killed me. It hurts. I love watching this. Oh. Just like when the one guy like was talking <laughs> about like Jesus and then the other guy, the, yeah. the, what was the black guy talking about? Like feeling some lady, some ladies Yo, needs sexually. He was, yeah, he was like, he was like, she left me because she said I didn't fulfill her needs sexually. Meanwhile, was, they said this is thirty <laughs> seconds intervals. Yeah. So how, why, how could that guy jump to that immediately? I actually liked the first guy who was like, my mom makes turtleneck sweaters. He's like, wearing a turtleneck sweater. <laughs> yeah. And then he ends, he just looking up the, you know, she's a really amazing woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never been speed dating. I have vibe, but I'm saying like at 30 seconds, you immediately say you, you didn't fulfill her needs sexually. I almost went with Trav the one time. Yeah. And Asbury. Then maybe I can fill you in on why. Like, I guess you got to get down to the point. Whatever's on your mind, you need to get that shit out now. Well, mom's amazing. You need Jesus. You don't feel somebody sexually. And, and then there's that one guy who just doesn't talk. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, uh. That, I like that guy. He's yeah, cool. He's cool as fuck. Um, but then as Kate's talking to this hot guy who is. So you think he's hot or they think he's hot? Maybe both. I'm, what's to you, bro? <laughs> this is 2001. You're not allowed to do that. Oh, so yeah. I don't think he's hot. We're, we went a time machine. Can't do um, that. But uh, Paige like leans over and is like, "Hey, I'm Paige. Did Kate tell you like she's in a committed relationship? <laughs> she's yes. a she's a snake. She's yeah. a... Well, no, I think it was a whole time. It was like a uh a, a like a ruse. It was just like they were working together. It was a <laughs> an elaborate plot. What what did uh, Donald Trump just get in trouble for? Nothing. Collusion. It was Nothing. a collusion. He, well, he didn't get in trouble for that it. That was what it was. <laughs> uh, yeah. So as they leave, like Kate gets a call about Shelley. And uh, I guess she finds out they Shelly's dead. Yeah, then they cut to the funeral, and then they're at the funeral. <laughs> and they're doing <laughs> funeral things. And um, Adam, like, and who is, like, Kate's on-off-again boyfriend. Well, the committed a, relationship, according to Paige. Yes, they're talking. And when Kate reaches in, like, uh, Adam's car and grabs, like, a paper or something like that, she sees a bottle of tequila on his passenger seat, and... 
She's like, what the fuck is that? He's like, oh, no, it's not for me. It's for someone else who got a promotion or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I've been sober for three weeks. Yeah, I'm doing... This stuff doesn't phase me anymore. I haven't touched a thing in three weeks. That's what he says. And he asks Kate to pretty much, like, go to dinner. And she kind of, like, sort of declines. Because last time, she wound up in Lake Tahoe in a hotel <laughs> for, for three, three days. days. <laughs> Which... Uh, but And what I hate about that is, like, that's one of those scenes and one of those lines where they throw in that line... To make it seem like they have history. Just show you they have history. Yeah. Well, they have to. Yes, and it's annoying. But they don't have to do that. Because you could tell when they're talking, the chemistry is fucking horse shit. Straight dog shit. At least I, when I was watching, I'm like, this feels forced. Well, probably. It reminds me of when you're going to hate me. But in, I think it's episode two or three. I think three. Um, when, maybe it's two. Of what Star, Star Wars? Wars? Yeah, oh. when I Anakin, seen episode three. Anakin and Obi Wan are in the elevator talking, like, "Oh, remember that one time?" He's like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "See, I had to help you this time too." And like, they're just throwing in background shit like that happened in their past, just to make like, "Oh yeah, okay, they bonded." Or like unnecessary flirtatious lines between or Obi Wan and Anakin flirting. <laughs> no, <I don't> Pat... <laughs> <I don't understand. laughs> no, just like unnecessary lines between uh, Padme and Anakin, where like. George Lucas is like, I can write romance. No, this is worse than that. This is worse than that. Yes. This is like... No, watching, no, I mean, that's worse than this. This is like watching <laughs> two cardboard pieces try to have organic chemistry. I thought it was... Well, I think it's more so, honestly, the guy that, that plays Adam isn't really that good of an actor, honestly. Neither is she. Well, she... No, he... I don't know. His character... I feel like he's great in TV series. He doesn't, yes. feel, he doesn't feel good in this. He doesn't and feel good in a, a film production. Actor. Yeah, yeah, he's not. But she's not that great of an actor either. She's not bad. I don't know. I think he's worse. I think he means. Oh, he's worse. definitely not good. Yeah. I, I think it's very apparent that there are some. He's only there for his looks. Yeah. There for their looks and there for the paycheck. Like they, they, they're they not really into the film. Yeah. So um, then the, like while all the girls are standing around after Adam leaves, uh, Detective Vaughn comes up and asks if the girls know anything about Shelly. Shelly. Because they found her dead, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, and they're yeah, like, at the funeral. <laughs> the fuck? She's, <laughs> no, no. We just assume she's dead, but we haven't found anything yet. <laughs> but yeah, so he asked them, and they're like, oh, I haven't talked to her a year. And then Paige is like, I if, make that two. I haven't talked to her in two years. Yeah. And somebody else says, yeah, me too. Maybe Lily. Yeah. And they're, well, um, they, were, I guess it cuts to Dorothy's house, right? Yeah, it cuts to Dorothy's house. And, and she gets a Valentine's Day card. Yeah. I love this one. I don't remember what that one says. So this one was my favorite one. This one, I it said, roses are red, violets are blue. They'll need dental records to identify you. Yes. Oh, yeah, you're and right. I, right. That, that was, was yeah. tasteful. I did like that It was one. tasteful. And then Campbell knocks on the door and was like, I guess who is her on and off again boyfriend also, maybe? No. They just met at yoga. I don't know how he knows where she lives. But he's like, oh, like nice pad well, you got here. Well, later on, they say, oh, you've only known him for a month. She's like, yeah, so. Yeah, but uh, that's what I'm saying. But they haven't been dating that long. But I'm saying, so then he comes in and is like, oh, you remember my roommate? He didn't pay any of the bills. And I just came home and I didn't know all my shit was outside. So uh, He's like, yeah, can I? I was coming over to ask you for a favor. And then Dorothy's kind of just takes the initiative. She's like, she tells the oh, maid okay, to make up yeah. a room. Maid, bitch, go fucking make up a room. She's like, did you ask your dad? And he's like, N or she's like, no, I'm telling you, like, go fucking do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, she has a guest room made up for Campbell. Yeah, Kim, who is Dorothy's stepmom, step who's younger than her. Yeah, she's like younger than her and Asian. She comes down and they like asks about Campbell. She's like, like none of your fucking business. And they start arguing and <laughs> about how she's like dating her dad or married to her dad. Yeah, and then calls when Dorothy's her, dad, calls her a male order bride. Yeah, male order bride. It's when Dorothy's dad comes down. And it's like hey, hey, male what's order this? bride from hell. Yes, she's like, oh, what is this? He's like, what is this all about? And then you, Kim's like, you will respect. Yeah, Kim's like you. She called me a mail order bride from hell, and uh, Dorothy's dad was like, "You need to respect my wife." So she pretty much took Kim's side, mm -hmm. which would piss off any kid. Yeah. Um. So then it cuts to my favorite scene. <laughs> um, Kate is in the shower. Oh wait. Uh, <laughs> wait no, wait. yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. So Kate's in the shower and she hears a noise and so she gets out to investigate. Investigate. Everyone's investigating. Yeah. I don't know why. They're all investigators literally, except for the detective. Here. Yeah, literally the only one that doesn't answer me. So then she doesn't see anything and she goes back and to try to get back in the shower and the water shut off. 
I don't think it's shut off. I think it just stops working randomly. Maybe. Because she says, like, not again, and she calls her landlord. That makes sense. She calls Gary. No. That's not the, the guy's name, Gary? No. Yeah, it's Gary, Gary. Oh, Gary's not the fucking oh, no, landlord. No, no. Oh, yeah, oh, you're, no, right. You're, you're, right. Right. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I know I'm right. I watched the fucking movie, unlike some people here. I seen the movie before you were born. Yeah, Valentine's Day. <laughs> 2014. But, uh, yeah, she calls the landlord and says, like, uh, Bruh. Yeah. You know what? This is another point where she is acting terribly. But they might have added sound effects in after. Yeah. They... Because literally, like, as um, it, like, rings, I think, like, once, and then it's, like, his message. And before it even beeps for her to leave a message, she's already talking. Like, yeah, like, the water's not working. Yeah, they, yeah, they probably did that. Out. They messed and she's like, up. are you there? And as she's saying, like, are you there? She just hangs up. <laughs> so I'm like, well, you didn't really give him a chance to answer the phone if he was there. So, so. then she opens the refrigerator and, like, grabs the bottle of water and it's like, not enough water. Because she has shampoo in her hair. Yeah, she has. So then she has to put her head in the toilet and clean it out. And yeah. then, would, did, did she hear another noise, right? No. So the phone rings as soon as she starts rinsing oh, okay. her hair in the toilet. And then she answers. It's kind of like staticky noise. Mm-hmm. And there's no one talking. But then she realizes the front door's open. How she didn't see it the first time she came out, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it was like that the first time. Oh. I think when she stuck her head in the toilet, that's when the door opened. Okay. So she was like, what the fuck? So she walks into the hall to investigate. Why the fuck you're investigating? Dude, everyone's investigating. When your front door's open, like... You need to get back on the phone. Call cops before you even move. Yeah, call Vaughn. Yeah. And um, <laughs> she walks into the hall, and the mask that was on the killer from earlier is, like, stuck in the elevated door, and it just keeps shutting on. I like how it just keeps dinging, too. Like, yeah. ding, ding. <laughs> I've never seen ding. that in real life. I wish I did. Me neither. And I don't think that mask would stop an elevated door. I think it would have crushed it. Yeah. Uh, la, la. And, and then I, Gary opens the door, yeah. and he's like, Her how about Gary. a date, Kate? Yeah, how about oh, a date, that Kate? Guy, that guy's like, you look great. Kate <laughs> could be, be my, fate. Kate, would you want to be my mate, Kate? <laughs> Dude, and then she's like, "You're scary, Gary." <laughs> Dude, that I guy, <laughs> that's that a guy, gift. She got me. That guy looks like Meth Lab Zoolander. I, I think that's the <laughs> point. But it's so funny. She's just like, "Uh, you're scary, Gary." And he's like, "Okay, okay, like, yeah. Kate." Kate. <laughs> um, and then it goes to Lily watching like a dating video, and like pages <laughs> over. And then the doorbell rings. So she looks out and nobody's there. So she opens the door. How the fuck? Like, every, I hate these kind of scenes where they like look around like, oh, there's something on my doorstep. Bitch, you would know that shit. Notice that shit I as know, soon as you right? open the door. So she sees the Valentine. She picks it up and it's got like a rose and chocolates. Um, when she like bites into the chocolate. Well, she first she's like, oh, this is for you, Paige. Paige's like, it ain't for me. Yeah. And so then she's like, all right, for me then. <laughs> so then she bites into the chocolates and it's got maggots in it. I'm pretty sure this is the first scene we get a title drop. This movie has a. Ha- I know it's around what, what did Valentine's it do? Dude, everything takes place during Valentine's I Day know, for this. But, like, I'm. S- <laughs> Title drops are one thing. I know I get them. And I know it's my thing. But, like, when you're knowingly doing it to do it, it drives me nuts. So, like, if you listen to several times about the movie and they say, Do you want to be my Valentine? I'm like, We, we get it. The, the- well, you don't ask someone to be your Valentine's Day. So yeah, you'd be my Valentine. But I feel like the, it's just the name of the movie is Valentine. It's I just, understand, but I'm saying the way he's trying to make it seem is like they it, can't use Valentine. But it's just unnecessary the way the writers wrote it in there to constantly drop it in there. Like the movie takes it. place there on Valentine. <laughs> it came out like the week before. <laughs> just makes me mad. That makes me a mad boy. So anyway, the the dude that re- that made the movie, <laughs> he got the idea from the maggots from um, the guy that wrote Fat Phantasm and directed it, Don something mm-hmm. that I can't remember. So he heard a story, I guess, that his dad. Was eating like a candy bar at nighttime, and then turned on lights, and there was ants all over it. Ugh. It's not maggots, but yeah, but I'm saying it's similar. Yeah, that reminds me of those videos that were going around of like the Reese's, and somebody like opened them up, and there was like fucking bugs in them. But I'm pretty sure it was fake. Okay, they better show some fucking respect. Yeah, you know those videos go around on Facebook. Um, so then Lily and Paige are trying to like figure out who JM is that like mm. wrote that or gave them the Valentine. Johnny Max. Va- Valentine, name drop, movie. Drop. Uh, <laughs> Yo, Lily's reaction was gold. The what? actress who played her when she bit into that, like I was, cra- I was laughing at her reaction, the way she reacted to that. Well, yeah, I'd fucking scream too. But like the I'd way I scream like a girl, and I'm a fucking grown ass, tough ass man. But she just the way she reacted, like how. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, no, I just I loved her reaction. Yeah. So um, anyway, they like are wondering who JM is, and then they're like, "Oh, whatever happened to Jeremy?" Like, Jeremy who? Melton, right? That's his last Milton, name. Yeah. Milton, yeah. Milton. James Marston. Sure. Okay. 
Um, Paige and Kate are at a party. Well, they cut to the art party. Yeah, it's like an art party. Paige and Kate are there together talking. And then they see the guy, Jason, from earlier who went on a date with Shelly. Yes, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, you're like, oh, shit, bro. This is I Honestly, they got me with that. For most of this movie, I was like, yeah, it's probably him. They changed his name. Well, yeah, we didn't get into it further, so. That's just what I assumed from right there. I said, yeah, "Yeah, this has got to be him. And it's also the actors share some similar facial features with. Yeah. One's a fucking child, Rob. Yeah, I know. But I'm saying it's not, it's only supposed to be like 10 years, I think. Or 13 years, yeah. So it's not, it's like from the 13 to 26. Yeah, it looked a lot different. No, not really. They kind of look the same. But anyway, so Kate and Pedro, then they look at Jason. Jason looks at them, but they don't know each other. Yeah. He's like or smiling. does Jason know them? No, he doesn't know them. But, but he's or smiling. is he? Does he? I don't know. But he's smiling all creepy. Yeah. And they're like, and Paige's like, oh, why don't you come over to us? And then he like gets mad and walks away. <laughs> I don't know, know why. <laughs> mad boy. Jason doesn't like. Yeah, Jason doesn't like her. Mad boy, real quick. So he w- walks away. Uh, Lily like comes up with Max, who's hosting the party. <laughs> he's fucking weird. Yeah, he's fucking weird as fuck. And then um, Paige walks away. And meets up with Campbell. She sees like Campbell and starts talking to him. And then Dorothy like walks up and is like, "Oh, hey, this is like my boyfriend." <laughs> like, and then they're, like all the girls are around. They're like, "Yeah, Paige is just flirting with him, or hitting on him, something yeah. like that." Um. So then it like it's time. Max like his party is about to like uh, is he has like that. It's like a video maze. It's like a press conference. He starts though. Yeah. And he says how like uh, this is all about Valentine's Day, Valentine. Don't piss Rob off. And uh, <laughs> they drop that name again. But um, and he says blind date time. But, but yeah, they like split the dudes and the girls, up, the dude, the boys and girls. up. But there's no blind dates. I thought they were going to go on blind dates. And then they start walking down like these halls of fucking monitors. With Marilyn Manson playing. Is that what it was? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And, like where the girls go. There's like guys who keep like saying stuff and it's like close ups on their mouths or eyes and it's fucking creepy. And then, well, I will wait one second, I guess, to get into that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, Max and Lily are like about to fucking make sex in, <laughs> in like the middle of the maze. The maze. And Amy, who's Max's like assistant, this or something is like so that, fucking walks weird. up and she start gets all like hot and bothered. She's, She's like, like rubbing her chest. Yeah, rubbing her chest, like trying to undo her fucking like, blouse. Watching them and I'm like, dude, I. <laughs> <laughs> fucking get like, who the there. fuck is that she's like oh yeah. it's Amy she's like who the fuck <laughs> is Amy she's like oh I invited her why the fuck did you invite Amy yeah. <laughs> and when like Lily goes to like walk away Max is like this mean you're not gonna be my valentine <laughs> oh shit Rob's mad again valentine Rob's triggered <laughs> beyond triggered I fucking love it <laughs> so then like Lily gets lost in the halls of videos and she goes to like the guy section and it's all just like tits everywhere <laughs> on the monitors yeah like they're definitely looking at two different things yeah and um, the, so then the, the monitors start, start flickering. Yeah, they start acting all funny. And then you see the cherub guy, or the valve. Well, no, the, the first, what? Oh yeah, in the background. Yes, yeah, you see, like yeah. And then she gets shot with like an arrow in the stomach, and she turns around and says, "What the?" And then he shoots her two more times in the stomach. And you know what's weird? That's really her getting shot. She has a bulletproof vest on. What? Why they didn't do that with a stunt actor? I don't know. What? Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? They put a when Kevlar she, vest on her? Yeah, she shot had a vest pra- on when she got shot with the arrows. They probably shot her with practice arrows then. I, yeah, she got bruises and sc- cuts from it. Oh, look. my God. So what would th- what the heck would happen if you aim too high? I have Whoa. literally it. People no die idea. on sets all the time. Look it up, Rob. They Re- do. Rest in peace, Brandon Lee. So then after well, that, she, she gets shot and falls off into the dumpster. Yeah, it's like a I stairwell, and she falls through like the middle of it. Yeah, I appreciate that she's screaming all the way down with those three hours and that, three arrows yeah. in her stomach. Then lands in the dumpster and dies. Yeah, Basuda. Well, I'm assuming she's dead. So that's her second kill, by the way. Uh, C- Campbell's being yelled at by a fucking... What the fuck is her name? Ruthie? Yeah. By some girl whose name... Ruby? No, it's Ruthie. Ruthie? Ruthie. I even know what her name was. R-U-T-H-I-E. They say it like once at the end. She's, yeah, I didn't know who it was until the end. Yeah, but uh, her name's Ruthie, and she's, like, yelling at him, saying that she wants her money back for the, like, investments, quote-unquote, and he's just a leech. And then Dorothy's like, what? And she's like, oh, let me guess. You're his Valentine? <laughs> yeah, okay. Like, yeah. And Dorothy's like, that's my man's. For, yeah, and then Ruthie's <laughs> like, watch out for this guy, dumbass. He's a leech. <laughs> So then Kate and Adam were at the bar. <laughs> what? Just the way she says that. Yeah. Leech. Leech. And then 
Kate and Adam are like at the bar, which I guess is the worst spot for Adam to be at because apparently he drinks a lot. And um, doesn't Kate order him a drink too? No, she orders a Corona for herself, and he says club soda, and she goes make that too. Like two oh, club okay. sodas. I thought she said make the tip of the Corona. I was like, you're a bad no, girlfriend. You are not supporting No, him. she was like going to drink, but then she's like, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't drink around him. So she orders herself a club soda as well. Um, and then he asks like for a, a date again. Which she like says no, but then they go on a date. So I'm not. Yeah, really, I don't know what that was. Yeah, so I don't really understand. Um, Detective Vaughn. Vaughn is showing like all the ladies. A card from Jeremy that was sent to Shelly's parents. It said like too bad, so sad, Jeremy. <laughs> Dude, I fucking <laughs> love that guy. That's my fucking guy, just ruthless out there. And they're all kind of like wondering like um like where where well they say that they got Valentine's that kind of look like that, like they were weird Valentine's. Mm-hmm. But then they're also like what like whatever happened to him? Like nobody's heard of him <laughs> since like fucking middle school. Yeah. When he got sent to a he what, what happened? He got questioned, and then they sent him to an insane asylum. Yeah, he went to said? yeah until like juvenile detention, reform yes, ju- school. Yes, yeah, reform, reform school. school. But I'm saying they said like juvenile detention, detention. Yeah, they said everything, anything you can name of like. A, and then it did, they mentioned that like his parents died in a fire or something like that. Like yeah, yeah and they're like, did he do it? Yeah, the kid's yeah. like, did he do it? Oh, uh-huh. yeah. And the detective was like, I don't know. It was ruled an accident. The fuck do I know? Literally knows nothing for a detective. He's I, the worst detective. Yeah, he when everyone's in the he, investigating, he can't but, detect even the shit in his pants. But I also will say he's the best detective. How? Because later on, he starts to show the girls like this computer-generated image of uh, Jeremy. They're like, and they're just like asking dumb questions. Well, that's coming up, yeah. Yeah, isn't that this part? No, or no? that's this part right here. Yeah, no, he does it twice. He does the computer-generated thing the second time they come back. I think. Yes, you're right. Oh, okay, yeah. So, but, but this yeah. is the first time, like. He's asking them about people like in your home or like people in your lives. Yeah. And then he has, is this when he has, is this the scene where he, I can't remember, this is where he asked Dorothy about no. Campbell or that's, yes. the, this is the Campbell scene, isn't it? No, this is, no, 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 this isn't it. This no, isn't no, no, it. No, no, no. Okay. Because like, no, no, no. okay. all, all he says is he'll check into Jeremy Milton. Yeah. And then okay, when, yeah. They're, when they're like outside, Dorothy says that she's going to be next because. Because even that thing with the fire and stuff like that, I think is later. That's too. later too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, there are t- the two scenes I have down. Yeah. The two scenes that I remember the most with him are just these two separate scenes. Yeah. yeah. Where he basically makes so, the girls yeah. look dumb. Because basically he was, he was saying they were going to check into the dude, Jason, that was on the date, like first. And then they're like, all right, we'll, we'll think about like Jeremy Milton basically as an afterthought. Yeah, because they have like the same yeah. initials. So th- th- even the detectives like maybe changed names. Yeah. Oh, at that is point, this where he was like, he was like, you all got letters from someone by the name of JM and no one thought this was suspicious. And they're like, oh my God, yeah. And, well, they're like, no. <laughs> but because, but How he, the fuck do we know? He's yeah. just literally just, I'm glad that he calls them out on these on those two separate occasions for being dumb. Yeah. So then after he says he'll look into Jeremy, this is when Dorothy's outside and tells the truth. That Jeremy never attacked her. Yeah, she said that she made up being yeah. attacked and that she was just kissing him and then she didn't want to look stupid or something like that. So then they cuts to Kate going to Interlink to look up Jeremy Milton, which is, I assume <laughs> was before MySpace or Friendster. I don't know. I don't know if it's a fake website. It was just the interwebs back was, then. What was they didn't have shit. That was the first form of LinkedIn. Um, and then Adam shows up. So, I thought we were having dinner. Yeah. And then Kate's like, oh, I forgot. But she like asks... So they cut to like them after dinner. But what's wild about this is like everyone's always in everyone's house. Like, how did he get in there without her knowing? I don't think that was her house. That looked like the, like a library or something. Oh, so how did he track her down? I feel like because I, I think they were supposed to meet up for dinner. Because then she goes, "Oh yeah, I totally forgot." It was, yeah, but like I thought she said no. Yeah, that's yeah. If she said no, then like, oh shit, I forgot. I won too many um, club sodas. <laughs> I feel like it was. I feel like it was also the. Uh, 2000s so like back then people were just walking into their homes like going over visit like I don't know like Travis used to come over to my house and just walk in my house it wasn't a big deal you ever try that at his house I'm alive aren't I his mom would beat your beat fucking me to death ass love you mama um, but then they're like walking they're walking home and Kate asks Adam to come up to the apartment Adam says no he's like I don't want you to like do something you'll regret later. Yeah, regret that something that you'll say was a, a mistake or form sign of weakness. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, and he says everything. Don't worry, everything will be all right. Yeah, and then Detective Vaughn. This is where he, he's back with them. Right, yeah, right, this right. is where he shows him the yeah. picture of what Jeremy looks and like. Says Jeremy can look like anything. And the one, who's the one girl that says 
Wait, do you have a, a newer picture That's of him? That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. It's Kate. It's So literally my notes are police station. Kate is dumb. Dorothy's dumb. Vaughn took a shot at Paige. Yes. Yeah. But and, and then Dorothy's like mad because when they ask like her about Campbell, she says that she's only known him a month, but yeah, he's living in her house right now. And, and they're the, like, when he's like, okay, what's his last name? I'll look into it. She's like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, fucking asshole. After she was just saying how like Paige is fucked people that she didn't know the last name of, and then she doesn't know the last name of Campbell. Yeah. Uh, and then Detective Vaughn, like when they go to leave, Detective Vaughn like holds Paige back. He's like, "Hold on, like I have to talk to you about something." And he's like, "So what are we gonna do about this?" She's like, "About like Jeremy or whatever." And uh, she's like, "No, about this tension, you know, this sexual tension behind between us." And she's like. Yeah, get your fucking hand off my thigh. That's what we're going to do. Where do you want me to put it? Yeah. He like, says. He's like, where do you want me to put it? She's like, how about up your ass? <laughs> and then she like gets up and leaves. <laughs> Dude, I love fucking Paige in this. She's so funny. That's my girl right there. Um, there's a shot of the iron. Yeah. At Kate's house, which they showed earlier how it was like left on and smoking. And it's on and smoking again. So you're in her house. And then you see the killer grab it. And he starts to go into Kate's room, and somebody's like putting on like stockings and underwear, and it's fucking Gary. You think at first you think it's Kate, but then it's Gary, her fucking neighbor, in her house putting on like her fucking underwear and the pantyhose. Yeah, pantyhose. Oh. And he's like, "Oh, sorry, man. Like, don't uh, don't hurt me. I have a problem. And I'm not right or something like that." <laughs> he ain't right, all right. Yeah. So then the killer puts the iron to his face and then fucking beats him to death with it. Yes. And it's our third kill. Yeah, I appreciate how after he irons him in the face. Mm-hmm. He like looks at it for a second and then drops it and makes it a ball like a like ball a mace chain, yeah. ball and chain and just whoop I thought it was yeah pretty brutal. Um, Adam meets up with Kate outside of her house and he's like, "Oh, I was just you know bringing a gift over." But she but this was she pulled up in a taxi and he was already outside ringing the door. Yes, and he said he was just bringing a gift over and uh, that he talked to Detective Vaughn. Yeah, for two hours. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I'm real sorry. He's like, oh, it's cool. No no big deal. And then she's like, wait, where's the gift? And, and, he, and then he's like, oh. And then he gives her a lollipop. Yes, a lollipop. And then she says she has a gift for Or is that later? She has No, she has a gift for him now. And it's an IOU. Yeah. Uh, she goes up. TLC IOU. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Tender, love, Tender and care. love, and care. Bitch, I know what that means. Uh, Kate goes into her apartment and like almost beats Paige to death with the. Uh, then again, someone's <laughs> in someone's apartment. How are they doing this? With the iron. Well, the, it shows the iron first, and it's all wrapped up nice and neat. Yeah. And then and you're like, oh, shit, he's still in there. Yeah, or something. And but then Paige is in there. Yeah, it's Paige. And she's like, oh, I'm just hanging out in just your house, in, not my don't house. Don't know how I got in here, but I'm in here. How did he not break that iron, beating that guy's skull to death? Maybe bought him a new one. Bought her a new Maybe, one. yeah. Maybe that was the gift from Could the be. killer. Uh, so Dorothy, like, uh, calls them, right? Yeah, Dorothy calls and says the cop interviewed um, Campbell. Oh, yeah, Campbell. And uh, she like feels bad because the detective doesn't want Campbell to like leave town or anything. It's kind yeah. of like being a dick and held him for like hours. She said, "Yeah." And so then they hang up, and then it, the phone rings immediately, and it's the cop saying they arrested Jason. Well, <laughs> right before that, Paige says, "Well, why don't you make it up to him?" And like kind of like yeah. wink, wink. <laughs> fuck that dude, you know? Like literally fuck him to death. Succubus. And, uh, yeah, that's when the Detective Vaughn says, like, yeah, we got Jason Marquette. That's his name, Marquette. Uh, Dorothy gives Campbell. Yeah, so they're back at Dorothy's house. And it, he gets a watch. And then she starts to make sex with him. They make sex. <laughs> and, and then it cuts to the vet. This is the best part. And he seems like, or she seems, like, real disappointed. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's happened so fast. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so she's like, yeah, I'm going to take a shower. So while she's, like, showering, Campbell interrupts and gives her a necklace and says like here this is your gift but i have like an investors meeting i have to go to and i want to work out before i go to it and i'll meet you at the party later because they're supposed to go to dorothy's party he's like but i will totally be back before your party later and she's like okay so then you see campbell like in the uh pool house or whatever the fuck it is trying to transfer funds into his account (laughs) and i think he's like stealing her dad's money or something yeah because he's when they said i said san francisco i know where i was Uh, born yeah don't tell me where i was born just transfer the money yeah and I don't then, think he's getting the money transferred the no. way he talked. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. He's still, he's but a bad boy. Dorothy, like, calls over the intercom and is like, uh, Campbell, 
the like we have no hot water could you like go and reignite the pilot and he's like yeah no problem he's like am i on the fucking staff now <laughs> Come on, <laughs> man. He's, about his own <laughs> Dude, he, yeah, he's so fucking mad so then he goes down into the basement and he ignites the pilot and he's like oh sick and he can get the fucking axe to the back by the killer yeah. that's another quick kill just died like as soon as he got hit mm-hmm. uh page and kate are at the party and Paige is kind of sort of looking for that guy, Brian, from Speed Dating. Um, yeah. Dorothy's waiting for Campbell. She's like, oh, I but don't know. She's in the, the kitchen eating all the chicken wings. Who? Dorothy. Oh, Dorothy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's like, sitting on the, the, the in the kitchen table. and There's literally 30 chicken wings eaten in front of her. Yeah. And, and I'm like, so I'm assuming that's stress, stress eating. Yeah. And that's. But I'm th- like, she didn't eat all those. Well, obviously. I in think real it's, life. it's a movie. So. Yeah. But she's like, yeah, I know. I know I'm being dumped. Like, I get it. So then Adam comes. <laughs> yeah, so. And, uh, and any, any t- so everyone else is pretty much dressed up. Isn't he wearing just like a Regular fucking shit. Hawaiian shirt or something? <laughs> it's not even like a Hawaiian shirt. It's, it's, like, like, a, it's like a fucking green shirt with like a, a, a fucking chest pocket. But I'm it. saying anytime they ever yeah. show him, he's so underdressed and yeah. the clothes don't fit him. Yeah. It's like six t- yeah. sizes too big. So, he's supposed to be like the, the good looking guy. I guess this is what girls liked in 2001. I have no idea. I don't understand how anyone finds him attractive. He looks he looks weird to me. He does. That's when you said before when he's supposed to be the hot guy or something. I'm like, he looks awkward. But they say that too. Somebody says like when they see him, I think maybe at the funeral, they're like, oh, like that guy, like your guy, like talking about how hot yeah. he is or something. I'm like what? Um, so then uh, they're on the dance floor and Adam uses the IOU and Kate and him like kiss. Cuts to Paige dancing on the fucking dance floor by herself, and Brian finds her, who's the guy from Speed Dating. Uh, he's like, oh, I want to take you upstairs f- uh, for a surprise. She's like, oh, okay. So when they're upstairs, they're like kissing, and Paige's like, where's my surprise? So he's like, he, he has her sit down, and he like, pulls down his fucking pants, and he says, surprise. <laughs> Dude, I fucking love that part. And she's like, you brought me up here to show me your penis. That's so sweet. And he's like, well, what are you waiting for, honey? Wax it. <laughs> so I, I fucking, that's my guy right but there. What did she think he was really doing? Like, that doesn't make sense. I think she knew. But I'm saying the way she acts is like she was surprised like that he did that. Maybe she thought he had a small dick. I don't know. Or he was an asshole about it. I don't know. I don't, she's like, oh, yeah, she, was, tr- she was clearly trying to get fucking banged. That's what but, I'm saying. And then when he did that, she's like, oh, no, never mind. Yeah, because he's acting like an asshole about it, I guess. God, so. Um, but so she's like, oh, uh, here, take off because he like stops her. He's like, Paige, wait, it'll be all right. And she's like, Oh, okay, take off your shirt. And she's like, And take the rest of your pants off. Here, go ahead, lay down on the bed. And she like ties his fucking hands and feet to the bed and blindfolds him. And she's like, You still want me to wax it? And he's like, Yeah, I do. <laughs> and since she like, there's candles lit everywhere. And she like picks up a lit candle and pours a bunch of wax like on his dick. Yeah, because he can't defend himself. I think in this scene, too. Uh, I he, read somewhere that um, he was really naked. And he really got waxed on the dick. No, no, no. Uh-huh. There was someone outside the house just beeping the horn until he got paid to leave, because he knew they were filming a movie. <laughs> so he just sat outside on the horn and wait and, want, and said he wouldn't leave until they paid him. Yeah, but can't the cops get called? I don't know what happened if it ever like if they ever paid him or not. But let him beat his awesome. ass. Well, not they can't do that. But like I'm saying, like can't they just call cops? Like yeah, he's disturbing like the peace. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Oh, the that, girl that I, from yeah. Max's art thing, it, whose name is Ruthie. Yeah, she like is at the party and she's like, "Oh, did you get that necklace from?" Cam-? She's like, "Where'd you get that necklace? That's my necklace to Dorothy." Yeah, because um, the necklace that she got that for me, Campbell got it for Dorothy. Yeah, was he stole from Ruthie? Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Oh, she's like, oh, let me guess, your hits Valentine." And like they have like a little stare down, like yeah. fucking bitch, he's like, fucking he, bitch. And she's like, he doesn't love you. He loves your trust fund. Yes. Uh, Max yeah. is at the party, and like finds Kate, and he's like hitting on Kate, and like saying weird shit to her, and then he's like, yeah. she's like, uh, have you heard from Lily? And he's like, what? Lily's not in L.A. Like they, they called or something, yeah. or I called and they said she never made it. Yeah. What's funny about this too is um. She's in that other movie. I think I don't know if it's after or before Urban Legend Final Cut. Uh-huh. Her character, I think, does the same thing. Like, she was supposed to go to L.A. and she never makes it there. So, she's, like, typecast. Always trying to go to L.A. She's typecast as the girl that's supposed to go to L.A. But <laughs> and it doesn't. It. And then gets murdered. <laughs> by Aaron. I think that happened in fucking Knocked Up, too. 
She's supposed to go to LA and never made it. Oh, is she in LA? God. Knocked up? Are you? F- are I you thought f- only Kath- Catherine Heigl and. Isn't that um, who we're talking about? No. Oh, we're talking about Lily. Yeah, My Lily. Bad. My bad. I thought we were talking about Shelly for a second. You're right. It's Lily. No, only Catherine yeah. Heigl and um, Denise Richards were in Knocked Up. Yes, you're right. Wait, what? Well, they were watching Wild Things. Yes. Seth right. Rogen yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, Catherine right. Heigl. You are so right. Uh, then Ruthie goes into like a room with all of Campbell's stuff and finds the watch that uh, Dorothy, I keep. That doesn't even look like it's expensive. But then again, I wouldn't know what an expensive watch looks like. Me neither. And this was also 2001. Yeah. Copyright. So she's like, oh, shit, I got I, it. I feel like watches are now a thing again. So. Yeah. But she's like, hell yeah, I'm keeping this shit. She puts that shit on her wrist. And then she hears a noise. So she goes into the billiard, billiards room, which is like downstairs. Mm-hmm. And the killer's like dragging the maid out of a fucking <laughs> Dude, room. <it> was... Dude, <laughs> no one else is at the party anymore. It's just her. Well, I don't think anybody was down in that room. At that point. But I'm saying the the house is so quiet now and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then when you just see that happen, it reminds me of something from Scary Movie. <laughs> like yeah. that that killer would do. But because what's weird is throughout the movie so far, well, aside from Gary, because we don't know what happened to Gary's body, the killer doesn't touch any of the bodies. He just, like, kills people and leaves them there. Yeah. So why the fuck is he dragging this maid out? Why the fuck did he kill the maid? <laughs> but, the like, the killer's like, what, what the fuck? So he's... Um, starts to come for Ruthie and she hits him with like a pool stick. What are the mm. fuck are they called? Pu- pool cue? Yeah. I ripped the fucking page. So then she runs out the door and this, this doesn't make sense to me. She shuts the door and then looks at the door and wait for, waits for him to turn the knob like 10 seconds. But she's hiding at this point. No, right? she's standing there looking at the door. Before she hides under yeah, the bench She's like looking at the door she just came through and she's waiting for the doorknob to turn. And then it turns and she's like, oh, shit, let me get out of here. Then she runs. Did she think when she hit him he was dead? That's it? It's over? No, but I don't I don't know why. No, he no. did drop, though. I know, but I'm saying then she stood there just yeah. looking at the door. Like, is he going to come through? Or like, what's my next move? Well, I'd never been in that situation, so I wouldn't know. You know, I wouldn't know what I would do. Yeah. Probably beat somebody's ass. Cause I don't I'm, think you're beating anyone's ass. I'd beat my own ass. How about that? Yeah. So after that, she runs into uh, the sauna. The sauna. Yeah, and like hides underneath the benches in the sauna, and she finds Campbell's dead body. But she keeps looking through the door, and you see the dude, the the killers, yeah. like look through the door, and you're like, oh shit, he knows she's in there. But then he walks away. Yeah, and then she's like, four seconds later, she's like, all right, coast is clear. Yeah, I thought that too. Like I was like, like that's what I have. Like she leaves the sauna. Why the fuck would you leave the sauna? But I'm saying it literally. That mother sucker walked by. Yeah. She, 10 seconds. She's like, all right, coast is clear. We're out of here, guys. Yeah. But I mean, it's movie time, I yeah. guess. But still, like, if he didn't see you, why the fuck are you going out of the sauna? Stay there. Stay with the Campbell, dude. He needs you. Yeah. Well, he's dead, so he doesn't oh, yeah, need he, anyone. He died for her sins. <laughs> uh, the killer grabs her while she's, like, roaming the hall after, her, and he throws her through, like, a glass shower wall. Yeah. And then there's a couple piece of glass still sticking up from the floor and he like impales her fucking face on it and she dies and she's the sixth death pretty good rip lucy ruthie so then it goes to kate and goes like trying to find the dorothy and say like lily never made it to la Uh, yeah and then detective vaughn calls and says that marquette had to get let go because they had nothing on him and they couldn't really keep him and they're like, he's like, like stay where you are. I'm on my way. Because I, th- I think I know where he's going. Yeah. And there was another reason, too. Directly to you. Oh, because they say that Campbell never made it to the party. Is that why? Yeah. So he's like, oh, shit, I got to go there. And so then Kate runs into Adam drinking. And, and he she, looks pretty fucked up. Yeah. 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 So she's very mad. She storms off. She's like, fuck this. Yeah. And then it shows Paige. Whew. Hold on. Let me get ready for this. Paige in the hot tub. By herself. <laughs> and um, the, you see, like, the killer looking through the window to the door or next to the door. That's a pretty good shot. The, uh, of the killer looking through, like, what, the page? glass. Well, page. <laughs> nice shot. All right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get the baby oil ready. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, Well, I think Rob had something to say about that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I was talking to Mark earlier about it, like, how uh, Denise Richards sometimes... When you look at her, very attractive, and other times, just like I don't, all of a sudden, just not attractive to me. Like that was one of those scenes. I don't know why. I was just kind of like, you looked better with your clothes 
on. Oh, I know what it is. I think it's that you're gay and you're fighting, <laughs> <laughs> fighting your urges. It's a possibility. It's 2001. I was trying to suppress. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I went to church right after I watched it. <laughs> Denise Richards is a nice lady. I like her. I, yeah, she. I don't think she looks any less attractive without clothes. I don't know. I was just I was never a big Denise Richards person. I guess like I don't know. It's personal preference. Yeah. What do you think, Marcus? She looks good. That's what I say. But then again, she doesn't look good sometimes. She's like I like I, she's like Emma Roberts. I mean, like sometimes Emma Roberts looks good, and then sometimes like she's not good looking. What? I don't know if you're trying to get your ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever disrespect Emma Roberts. Roberts That's close. fucking Chanel What the fuck's her last name? Chanel I don't remember Chanel, Chanel number one Yeah She had a fucking last name I forget what it was Don't you ever disrespect <laughs> Chanel though uh, So anyway So then I forgot where we were at Oh yeah Something the, makes a noise And so she goes up and looks in the bushes It's No So the door closes That's what happens The oh, door the was door. open and it closes So she like turns around Because she's like Hello? Let me investigate again. Hello? Yeah, this guy's got like a whole rainforest in his hot tub room. Well, I think it's just a couple That's like Dorothy's potted house, plants. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Dorothy's house. So like it's obviously like... They got yeah, money out there. They, right? got, they got money. But once again, here we go with it's the 2000s. And we're just going to... Rather than do the logical thing and put my towel on and leave, uh, I'm just going to go investigate everything. Rob, uh, did you just start watching the movie? They've been investigating everything the whole time. I know what I'm saying. This is a recur- but did we, you watch the movie or not? But there was an important detail that we missed. She returns to the hot tub, and when she gets into the hot tub, there's a rose. We didn't even get to that part yet. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't forget it because I was waiting for well, you guys. I jumped to the investigating before she investigated. Well, she st- did she stand went, up and she investigated. Yeah, a she bit. investigates nine eleven, and then <laughs> well, this is pre nine eleven, so she looks into the bushes, which she doesn't even really go far. She just like puts her hands and she's like, okay. well, she spreads. It's not like bushes; it's like potted plants. So yeah. she just spreads them. To like look past them. She's like, okay, there's nothing behind these plants. And then she gets back, and then she sees the rose, and it, then she gets back up again. No, that she looks at the through the plants after she finds the rose. Yeah, yeah. Is she, I don't even remember that. Yeah. yeah, because she only like really goes to like look around the door, and she's like, um, hello, and that's hello. When she's, and that's, that's when, when she finds the rose, and then she's like, somebody's here, so she starts looking through the plants. Oh, but she says, she says, oh, does someone want to be my Valentine? Yeah, and Rob was triggered again for some reason. I, Forever triggered. So, because when she looks through the plants, she starts backing up slowly because she's like, "Okay, we're like, where the fuck is this person?" And that's when he grabs her. Yeah, you're right. So, but the, yeah. how did she not see that? Like anyone put that down or anything? Because he, dude, this is fucking after screen. You know what I'm thinking? Everything is a disappearing act. I think he might have been above her the whole time. You ever see <laughs> Mission H2O. Impossible? Oh, okay. And he's literally just dropped it. He's, just the one arm like, dropping H2O. I thought you were. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were. Back. That still doesn't oh, make sense. We will talk about that later on. No, we're talking about it now. So he's I'm, got upper body strength for days, dog. Pretty sure he did completed p 90 But I thought the same thing. I'm like, he's the quietest fucking person walking around in fucking Dude, all the, Everyone gets cards and stuff. Everyone gets all this stuff. And yeah. It's fine. He's very polite. Yes. So then she is thrown headfirst into the fucking hot tub. Yeah. And I th- she does bang her head, right? Yeah. That could fucking will, kill yeah, you, dude. So <laughs> this, when this happens, it's obviously a stunt double. Yeah. And the stunt double got, like, fucked up from, like, the jets in the hot tub. Like, she got, like, bruises, too, and cuts and... I would, scratches because of that. It wouldn't surprise me if she became a fucking paraplegic because of it. Yeah. Quadriplegic. Because, like, dude, like, if you you could really fuck up your neck doing it. Yeah. I don't know. But then the guy, like, closes the lid of the hot tub on top of her, which is, like, see-through, and locks it. And then he has this big old fucking drill because he's been watching Pool Party Massacre. Good movie, by the way. And then again, how did she not see this fucking drill plugged in with the longest <laughs> extension cord ever? Yeah, he not, just did it. But I'm saying you never see him plug it, it in. It's just he just picks it up off the ground. Dude, they don't have time in a fucking movie to show you my mountain stuff when I'm plugging in a drill gun. I, I don't know. And then he starts drilling through it. <laughs> yeah, and like trying to hit her, which I don't know how the fuck you miss. Like she can't go anywhere. <laughs> so yeah. then he finally like cuts her shoulder, which like knocks yeah. her out. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm woozy. <laughs> oh, woozy here. Yeah, so she she gets cut in the shoulder, and then he opens it and throws it in there, and she gets electrocuted. But if that was plugged into a GFI, that wouldn't happen. Yes, it would, which it was should have been if it was in a pool room. But then again, it's 2001, so I don't know what the code is. I don't know where this was filmed. I'm pretty sure they had pretty updated codes, and I'm pretty sure anytime you're near a water source, you need a GFI. I don't think GFIs came out until 2002. So that's <laughs> I, I, th- I think you just made that up off the top of your head right now. Yeah. But, and um, I agree. Well, uh, uh, I agree. 
That well, also I looks think, like a dollar dollar store drill too. Yeah, and I think that's fucking stupid that he opened it up and threw the drill. Like that, I think this is one of those scenes where it was a waste of like a scene. Yeah, I was expecting a much more brutal kill. Or yeah, or even like cooking. I thought originally well, when he locked thing. it, he was gonna cook her alive. Yeah. Then we started drilling. I'm like, oh, this is kind of fucking cool too. And she's like struggling to breathe, so she's breathing through the drill holes. Mm-hmm. I would have loved it if he had hit the jets and turned them on like Max, and you know how that bubbles yeah. up and everything. And she's just drowning inside there slowly. Yeah, they had to cut a lot of stuff, obviously. For the, I'm assuming this is different. Yeah, and that's to get the R rating. An, that's another problem with the times. Like, the the rating boards were shitty around this time too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a missed opportunity for a real gruesome kill. Yeah. Definitely could have been like a hands-off Michael Myers head tilt moment. I'm honestly surprised this was rated R because um, it doesn't seem that bad to me. It seems well, almost something like that. In the beginning, PG-13. what do you see her, her get her throat slit? And, and the, then you see the girl get her head smashed into the glass. You see that shit. I feel like nowadays if that was in a movie, it'd be PG-13. You see tits on the wall in that scene. Yeah, you're right. That is... That's the only part, like, I can honestly say, like, yeah, I understand. That's probably where we got the R rating, in all honesty. You didn't no, I, I believe that what he's saying, like, the slit throat and all that. I feel like nowadays, like, people are like, yeah, it's child's play now. But, I mean, you can't have nudity in PG-13. I agree. It's automatic R. Really? Yeah. Still? You cannot, yeah, you cannot show any nudity in PG-13. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's minor. what I'm saying. So, the second they, no matter what the kills were, the second they put exposed breasts in that, it was an instant R rating. But I'm saying even besides, like, that, I feel like with the slit throat and everything. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, he throws the drug in and electrocutes her. Yep. Lame. So then it cuts to Dorothy and Kate fighting. Well, uh, yeah, and the power goes out. Yeah, the right? power okay, goes okay, out because yeah, yeah. it was the GFI. But people are still at the party, so. But everyone's leaving the party. Yeah, now. so they're all dipping, and then it cut. You see Katie, Kate, and Dorothy fighting, like who the killer is, basically, like who's doing all this stuff, and they're like, oh, it's Campbell. She's like, oh, it could be Adam. And he's like, yeah, Adam. He's no angel, but he didn't do it. But obviously they're saying that because of He angel. was angel. He is, yeah. angel. he is angel. Um, And then she's like, Dorothy explains that she like hates all of them because like they were all had their own quirks and like unique traits, like their stereotypes. And yeah. she was always the fat one of the yeah. group. But she's honestly good looking. I think she's attractive. I think she's the least attractive out of all of them. But I'm saying she's still good looking. Like, yeah, she's all right. That's why I don't understand about this. Like, she's like, well, she had to get skinny, but she always feels that like maybe because she just ate those thirty chicken wings. She was up, she was probably, mad. She about felt that. too much again. sodium. She always. I feels get like mad with she, sodium. She's the fat one of the group. Uh, and then so Kate, like after like Dorothy storms off, Kate goes outside because she's like calling Detective Vaughn because the fucking power's out and it's fucking he still hasn't showed up. Yeah, and he's and the only one that can fix it. Yeah, and she hears the phone ringing, like a phone. So she follows it all the way down to this little pond. And she finds his phone that's near it. And then she sees the IOU floating in the pond that she gave to Adam. So she picks it up out. And then I think this is supposed to be Detective Vaughn's head floats up. Yeah. So, so it looks convenient. Like a Sam, it looks like a Samuel Loomis like mask. <laughs> it doesn't look like him. No, yeah, it, it's it bad. looks like a Samuel a Loomis like, trick-or-treat studio yeah. mask. Uh, then Kate like runs inside and Adam comes walking down the stairs all fucking weird and creepy like behind her and she doesn't yeah. even hear him yet yeah and Adam asks to fucking dance with her and Kate and Adam are like dancing and it's all awkward and she is clearly scared you can see she thinks it's him yeah and then she knees Adam in the balls even though he says like I would never hurt you yeah uh, Kate goes to Dorothy's room upstairs which is fucking like trash destroyed so then she comes back out and Adam somehow like behind her mm-hmm. not near the stairs and he's like, like, what the fuck was that all about? And then she like goes to run, and he chases her down the stairs. And then she, that she, this is when she goes into the hot tub room and sees Paige is dead, right? Yes, she sees that Paige is dead in the hot tub room, that, and she wishes it was a hot tub time machine so she could go back in time yeah. and prevent all this from happening. Yeah. Um, so then, but it's yeah, not. So yeah. Paige is still dead, unfortunately. So then she runs away from there, and then I guess grabs a bottle or something and, and gives Adam CTE. Yeah, Adam comes <laughs> and Kate's like. Bitch, gotcha. Yeah. The CTE was real then. But then, so then again, the studio like that made this was Warner Brothers, who also made Angel. And they were like, weren't down with this scene. They're like, no. Like, if he gets injured, how's he going to film Angel? You're like, they're like, no, don't do this. And then they're like, oh, no, we can do it. So that's like her really hitting him with something. I'm assuming it's a movie glass. Yeah. Whatever yeah. it is. Don't they usually use sugar, sugar glass? Yeah. What is it called? It's like sugar based glass. Yeah. Okay. I, I, think I didn't so. know. I never heard of it before. I mean, I don't know how they make it or how they made it into that shape, but mm-hmm. I think that's usually what's made out of that kind of stuff. Um, Kate finds Ruthie dead in the shower 
and then runs to Dorothy's dad's study because earlier in the movie Dorothy said that she her dad like when the, I guess when the power went out she, or something like that or when they talked about how that guy got let go mm-hmm. she said that her dad has like a gun yeah. in the study so Kate gets the gun and starts like walking around looking for and it's not really a good gun safe because she literally just breaks the glass open I don't think it's supposed to be a safe I think it's just a, like a, a gun show? case oh, yeah maybe with yeah. a lo- fully loaded magazine. Yeah, well, she there's like fucking tons of like rifles and other and shotguns and shit. She's like, let me grab the pistol. That's... Let me grab the smallest caliber weapon. And then she drops find. the ammo for it, right, or something like that. Oh, she drops she, something. No, she has. She puts the ammo in it and she cocks it too. And then she walks up the stairs. And at the top of the stairs, the killer like is there, like grabs her, and they both fall down the stairs. And then um, when the killer goes to get up, though, Adam, well, somebody shoots, and then you see it's Adam, and he fucking like shot her like fucking nine times. <laughs> yeah. Said Michael Myers ain't coming back now, bitch. With extreme prejudice. Well said, like, I'm sure 50 Cent could come back from this, but not... Not Valentine. Not Valentine. Name drop. <laughs> uh, so then after she gets... The Valentine gets shot up, they call the cops. Nope. What are you talking about? They unmask her first. First they, first they call the cops, no, then, they then they unmask her. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. I haven't been down that way. Yeah, that's not how it goes. They unmask because they shoot, and then she's like, oh my God, Adam's so sorry. So then Adam walks over, unmasks, and it's Dorothy. Yes. And then it shows him outside, and he's on the phone, and he calls, and they say, like, he, like, gets off the phone, he's like, oh, they said they'll be here soon. And that's when um, they're, like, talking about why would Dorothy do that, and yeah. he's like, oh, it's probably because she was, like, felt alone, even though she was, like, friends with all you, she still, like, couldn't mm-hmm. escape that. So then Kate's holding Adam, like, hugging him, and she, like, kind of falls asleep on him, and, uh, like, apologizes and I was like, no, it's okay. I loved you, and I always have. And then, like, you see something drop on her face, and they like, pan up, and blood's dripping from Adam's nose. Because he's fucking Jeremy, dog. So who was the real killer? Well, he was. Then why was Dorothy dressed up? So they have a deleted scene. You probably can watch it later, where you see Adam put the clothes on her. Why would they even film that? They filmed it, and then they were about to release it in theaters, and they said, no, it's just, they deleted the scene and they said, like, let's make people make up their mind for themselves. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, why would you even film that? It's, it's like, obvious that like, they're yeah. telling you it, it's so him. So, what but. happened was, so when this, when this, when they were filming it, he came on after, um, what's, I don't know, what's his real name, David, right? Yeah, I don't know. So, then it got released that he got signed on to Valentine to play the villain. Uh-huh. And so, they're like, why the fuck would they do that? So, that's why they filmed that. Then they're like, no, nah, fuck it. Like, when it came out and hit, like, no but press, yeah, like we hit press said, that like David Berkowitz, his whatever his name is, signed on to a new movie <laughs> to play the villain. That's annoying. Yeah, I'd be so mad if I was. The and they're company. like, great. They didn't want to do like anything. Also, what's weird about this too is when this trailer came out. This is one of the only trailers that are, is like a girl doing the voice for the trailer. Usually, it's like a guy. If you know what I'm talking about, like talking about the trailer, yeah, like the narrator. coming soon. And then, oh, like the narrator. Yeah, the narrator. Yeah. It's a girl narrator for the trailer. Hmm. I never watched the trailer. And also, another thing I'd like to get into. So, if you remember, if you remember from the beginning of the movie, when the, um, he's talking to all the girls, and Paige is like, "I'd rather boil alive." She does boil alive. Then she dies in the hot tub. Yeah. The one girl's like, "Ew, gross!" And she gets the magnets. Mm-hmm. And then Shelly said. In your dreams, and she dies basically like laying down, like she's sleeping. I see. Yes. And then Dorothy like says, oh, he attacked me. He attacked me. Lies. So then he did the roles reverse to her. Oh, like she at- she attacked, but he killed her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. But then what about fucking. So the only reason he was nice to Kate is because she never was mean to him. I see what you did there. Because there's no, in the beginning, there's no, um, she doesn't like make fun of him. Yes. Because she says, oh, maybe later when she says, oh, do you want to dance with me? And he says. She's like, oh, maybe later, not now or something. She said, I oh, always she... have. Yeah. So that's the end of this. So, All together, there's nine kills. Also, also one more thing. The dude that wrote it, Jeremy Blanks, said like if he read, if he could redo it, he would take out like the stupid humor and then take out the jump scares of the movie. Which, But then again, it worked on you because you got scared. I think, like Rob said, I think it was the sound more than anything, though. So, Kyle, what would you think of it? Let's go with you first. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so, I guess rating, I'll just start out straight with that. It's a 7 to me. 
I am more partial or I like slashers more. Um, honestly, for something that was made in 2000 as a slasher, this was actually really good. I liked it a lot. Um, I didn't know who the killer was. I, I, my first, because this was my first time watching it, I didn't know who it was. And I kept thinking throughout the movie, like, oh, maybe it's this guy. And then I'm like, no, maybe it's this guy. And I thought that Adam was too obvious that's why i was like i didn't I honestly didn't think it was him and i thought at some point like it might be dorothy i honestly did think that um the only thing that's weird to me is i think they show adam at one point with shorts on yeah that's when he goes to the party and yeah everyone else is dressed up does he have a cut from when he got stabbed by shelly in the beginning I, I didn't pay enough attention i don't know i'm gonna go back and watch that yeah though. i didn't see anything um, but if I had to say my favorite kill, I'm going to say Shelly, I guess. I don't know. I don't, they're like, they're all not bad. And I get, the, I guess Paige is like the most unique or maybe Gary's is the most unique because he's fucking <laughs> cross dressing. But no, I'm, I'm going to say Lily when she gets shot with the arrows. I like that. I just don't, the only thing I didn't like about Lily's is, she gets shot like all in the stomach in like the same spot pretty much. And that's very hard to be that accurate. Um, and that kind of bothered me while I watched it. But besides that, I don't know. My least favorite kill is probably the maid. Cause I didn't even know she died until she got dragged out of the fucking room. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I liked it. Like I said, I'm more, I lean more towards slashers in horror movies. Like th- uh, that's kind of my favorite uh, sub genre. And I thought that this honestly was pretty well done for something in 2000 one and honestly the cast is like really nice to look at so that 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 helps they're like this will probably be one i watch more than once so i'm glad you kind of picked it i've been meaning to watch it and you know it but like i'm glad you fucking picked it because yeah. you, you forced me to buy it and watch it now yeah um you want to go mark yeah i'll go next <laughs> well i'm just saying i don't rob, know how i knew that <laughs> well rob has the pick next so it makes more sense oh yeah, yeah, everything. yeah well not really well, I guess not. But no, anyways, no. I've seen this movie a billion times, but I haven't seen it in probably 10 years. I, Me and a, a friend of mine, John, used to watch it, the DVD, every day. Like, not every day, but pretty much almost every day. I've seen it. So I haven't seen it in a while. And it kind of sucked because re- then right when um it started in the beginning, I was like, oh, fuck, isn't it the dude from Angel that's the like dude? So I kind of knew. I remembered, yeah. which didn't really matter. It has a lot of like the 2000... The early, the late '90s, 2000s cliches and teenage horror, I guess, whatever you would, slashers. But I love slasher movies; those are my favorite. I don't really nothing I would change with this, it like, because since it, when it came out in 2001, yeah, I think it still holds up today. I think it's good. I could watch this movie again, like next week, and be fine with it. The only thing I thought that dated it a little bit was just cell phones, but there's nothing you can do about that. Yeah, that's there's nothing you can ever do about that. Yeah, but still, I would I would say it's a seven. Also, if I if I think of nostalgia because I've used to watch all the time as when I was younger, it would probably be higher. But just I would I would recommend this to anyone that likes slashers. I th- I think it's excellent. Yeah, it is pretty good for a slasher. Yeah. My favorite kill is Ruthie in the shower when she goes through that. And also my least favorite kill is the the maid probably too because you don't even know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, like why she was killed off the screen and all that. Yeah. But I, w- I would recommend this to anyone, like I said. I don't see... Like this movie doesn't get like boring to me ever. Like, there's no point where the movie where there's like dialogue. Even though some of the dialogue sucks, it's still I think it still all goes together well. It goes smooth. Yeah, movie. the pacing's very good. Yeah. It was, like, when I was doing the review and writing it down, like, I looked and it already went, went an hour went by. I'm like, holy shit, that went so fast. Yeah. So. All right, Rob, what do you think about it? Your first time seeing it also. Yes, correct. This was my first time seeing the film. It wasn't a bad movie. To me, it was it was pretty good. In the realm of slasher films, it's very, very post-Scream era. You know, I did what I let... You know what I did last summer... That, that era of films in general. Um, very indicative of 2000 filmmaking. Definitely, as we said several times before, you're not going to see this film made today. Especially with the way this film, the way the music choices are. 
the way the dialogue goes, it's it's a, it's in a time capsule. So it's kind of cool when I'm watching it because I get a bit of a nostalgia factor watching it because it takes me back to the early 2000s. One major area where this movie excelled was its sound design. I know I said it before and I'll say it again. The sound design was very well done, created great airs of suspense, and even got me with a couple jump scares. So that I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate when a film can get me like that. Scaredy boy. Yeah. So overall, I would give the film a 6 out of 10. I, I felt that there were times where it just... It just felt like a campy, rushed movie. I, I, it's hard for me to articulate how I really feel about it. It just felt like how so many of those horror films felt. They were trying to recreate the magic of Scream. Yeah. Well, well, let me cut you off. I'm sorry to cut you off real quick, but the one bad like thing critics said about this movie was that it tried too much to be like an 80s slasher. I can see that very much where it was trying to transplant the 80s slasher formula into, 2000, mm-hmm. into the early 2000s. I just feel like there's so many films that do it better. But if there was any film to do it after the 80s, uh, I don't even want to say Scream because Scream's not an 80s slasher. This did it. This, I Maybe that's why I like it so much. Yeah, I think it did feel very much in that vein. But um, like I said, it's there to me, there's so many other films that do it better. I'm not going to sit here and, and crap on it and say it's a horrible film. It just wasn't one that maybe I'd be quick to go back and rewatch. I enjoyed watching it. It was fun. I actually liked how the movie was self-aware at times and just how dumb some of the characters were being. And that's very iconic of 80s slasher films of the characters making bad choices, investigating things. You know, I there were several times when people were running and I was like, when are you going to trip and fall? Like, I was waiting for it. Honestly, I don't think that's as big as a thing as, like, so we, as, movie made it out as, to be. Yeah, as we make it out to be and have that movie made out. But I'm like, yeah. there were just certain elements I was waiting to happen. But of course, like every time there was a noise, you have that mindset of where, why are you walking towards it? Why are you not calling the police? Why are you not going away from the danger? But regardless, like I said, it's a good movie. Check it out. It's worth your time. If you like slasher films, 110% worth your time. Uh, definitely in that wheelhouse. So six out of 10. Favorite kill? Well, let me do my... Yeah, my favorite kill would have been Paige. Yes. If he had followed... If Adam had followed through with the drill. Or, was it Adam? Or Dorothy. We don't know. Yes. If they had followed through with the drill and made good on all that buildup... Because that scene to me was horrifying. I don't know if you have a fear of drowning. So... And I'm claustrophobic. So the idea of getting closed in that hot tub and then having that occur, that was definitely scary. But I'm going to have to give it to Ruthie's death being my favorite because I think that the suspense buildup was really good. The physicality of the kill was really good. And it was, just, it was just a solid, brutal kill. I do usually like brutal, especially how he like threw her through it. And yeah, I like that. Face yep, yep. Least favorite, the maid. I, I, I think she might have actually just had a heart attack. She was bloody. Okay, maybe she had an alien in her chest. A chest burster. Could have been it. But yeah, so that's my that's my take on it. Check it out. I guess then we will talk about what is to come next. Coming soon to a theater near you. Rob's choice this week. So, um, what are you choosing, boy? All right. Well, I know that. Since we're snaking around, the next this choice and the following one would normally be mine, but I know we're going to break with that a little bit, so I know you'll talk in a few moments about that. So for my first choice, I am going with a creature feature from 1982. I am going to be recommending us to watch John Carpenter's The Thing. Okay. I think he's double-checking the year. It's 82, right? I thought it came out in 84. Wow. No. It's 82, right? Yeah. Okay. I have another movie in mind, but I will wait until after this one to lay it out there. One that's special and dear to my heart, so I'll hold off. Have on you that guys one. seen the thing or no? 
I have several times. It's what one of my fucking it. stupid ass, <laughs> dumb ass, white trash, <laughs> dumb ass question is that? No, I didn't know. I didn't know. No. You said you never saw The Omen. You never seen Valentine. You never seen any movie. Me and you have talked about the thing many but times. But I'm saying you never talked. You never seen it. You never seen. You seen literally one movie. This is one of my all time favorite one? horror films. So, I I I haven't seen it in a while, but I can't wait for that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Um. So, thing 1982. And that's next. Uh, not the not the one from 2010, right? 2014. Uh, no, I think he said 1982. So <laughs> maybe I'll watch that one. <laughs> uh, I guess that's everything for us. If you would like to contact us, you can always email us at vintagehorrorpod at gmail dot com, which I don't think we, anybody's emailed us yet. So I'm very disappointed. And I swear to God, if we get one from Johnny, it uh, will be very upset. <laughs> it, it be yeah, funny. I know he would. <laughs> Uh, our Instagram, please, 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 please follow us at Vintage Horror Podcast and follow us on Twitter at Vintage Horror underscore uh, Mark's board and would like to answer any questions or comments you guys have. We'll reply to you. And that's pretty much everything for us. Check you later. See you guys later. Bye.